Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 98 of ZK Live. I'm your host, Zach Kenny from ZK Painting, and tonight we have Pierre Finkelstein, the great, the legendary Pierre Finkelstein. Um, we're going to be bringing Pierre on as quickly as possible. This has been a uh, quite the effort to get this guy on. He's a world traveler, does decorative finishes all over the world, one of the top finishers, teaches classes, has a line of brushes. He's just... Uh, He's the definition of a craftsman. Um, when I see him get on, we're going to pull him right up. Let's see. Where are you? There we go. There he is. I'm requesting. And the man, the myth, the legend in real life. Hold on to your horses. Hey, Zach. Hey, how are you? Good, good. Just made it. Uh, had a rush back from a job site, as, as you know. No matter how good I plan something, there's going to be always an issue. And then, boom, I have to motor down fast as I could to get it already. So, Denzel here got me all set up. Say hi, Denzel. <laughs> oh, my gosh, in real life. <laughs> She's got to go home now. But uh, anyway, so I think we're, in, uh, we're, in, uh, we're live, right? We are live. Oh man, exciting, exciting. All right. I'm excited and I, I first I just want to really I want to thank you for your time. I know you are a man who's in high demand. <laughs> you're, a, you're a master craftsman and so your time is valuable and I really appreciate it. And 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 I appreciate the 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 opportunity to be on your podcast and all you've done for the trade so it's uh it's it's all good on on both ends I suppose. So for people who don't know you, like we're gonna, I want to start with just a. Quick are they overview. are they people that don't know me really? Is that possible? <laughs> there, there, there are, and and we want to sure. fill them in because I'm sure there are plenty of people, and that's good. <laughs> you, you you are in a rare, rarefied air, rare world, and you know, and so your reputation precedes you in that, Thank but you. um. Could you just give me a quick overview of today, what your company looks like, and then we'll go back to how you got here. Oh, you froze up. Hello? Yeah, could you, you could froze Could you up. give me a, a brief overview of what your company looks like today, and then we'll go back and hear the origin story? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, owner and operator of, of Grand Illusion Decorative Painting for over 35 years. Uh, today, we're a company that, specialize in high-end residential we we 90 percent of our accounts are high-end residential we do a little bit of commercial but the commercial we do are also like high-end hotels and uh high-end boutiques so they're they are closer to to a residential than they are to a com to a commercial in terms of the way it's treated uh not so much the way it's handled but the, the workload essentially uh and uh by Denzel, sorry. And uh, so far uh, as, as we are, we, we, we're, we're extremely busy with, with this type of work. Uh, for the last 10 years, I've been doing a lot of consulting so that it's also getting a, a lot of traction where I'm hired to, uh, you know, come up with recipe techniques for a bigger outfit, for a union outfit, for uh, commercial outfits. And they want a very specific thing, so I'm trying to, you know, bring it to their to. I don't want to say to their level, but to something they can handle. And it's usually the size is too big for me anyway, so uh, I have to kind of scale things for for somebody else to do it. And we've we've done a lot of that. We do a lot of color consulting also for some of our big clients, uh, paint schedule and so forth. But usually it's tied in with some decorative painting. And aside from that, I have my brush business and education business which is a small part of our business, but our, that, that I'm trying to grow. So it's balanced a little bit more to be a little bit more grounded because uh, I'm hopping from job to jobs and <laughs> airplane to airplane. It gets just a little bit tired. So I'm trying to ground myself up. But as I, as I say that, uh, I have uh, a lot of trips lined up for this month, but that's the way it is. And do you generally work alone or do you have a team of people? I know so, you have Denzel that manages the back end stuff. So we we are there. We have uh, four ladies uh, in the office uh, between the the marketing for the brushes and some other education between 
uh, uh, Grand Illusion specifically, uh, Heidi, which deals mostly with, you know, my Grand Illusion day-to-day -day, uh, clients and bookings and so forth. And we have a couple other ladies that, that are doing the store operation and packaging and stuff like that. And then in the paints, I have two painters now. I used to have like seven. Uh, it got to be a bit too much because I ended up really, uh, as you know, I start working for them rather than them working for me in a sense that I always have to feed work and not always something that I would clearly want to do sometimes. And so I found to be now in my later years to be, it's better I have two really good dude mechanic that work with me uh, most of the time. And then I have a dozen or so of long time uh, um, co-workers used to work, but most of them used to work for me at one point or another. Uh, or a consultant that been with me for 20, 25 years, and I hired him for specific jobs depending on their skill set. Uh, and then I have a you know a bunch of really good house painter that I sub jobs to, but I kind of manage what I need to have done. And and but if it's a job that I put on for me for Grand Illusion, I'll do it from A to Z, and I hire the people that I need to have. Um, it's a bit more challenging, to, but. It, it, as I'm trying to transition to, and I do a lot of consulting, that's just me. I can't really sub that out. Uh, it seems to be working out well. I think the COVID has sort of precipitated this kind of transition and, uh, you know, scaling to a different level. And for the last two years, that's what's, that's what's been happening since COVID. Prior to that, it was eight or nine all the time on the staff, which had its pluses, but also a lot of its minus. And, and uh, I mean, there's something we should talk about in the podcast, I suppose, because there's, yeah. there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of craftsmen that are too small to to get bigger, but too big to get small. And, you know, like your, your, your ass is in between two chairs. I don't know if we can set up, but. Uh, yeah, you can swear and, all you want. <laughs> oh, okay, I won't. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so it's always a position where you, you're, you're, you're maxed out to, to your level that you tend to do other thing and you need, you know, two more people. And when you have those two more people, then you're, you're not busy enough to really, uh, you know, uh, balance things out. And I think that's, that's a crucial problem for a lot of craftsmen that are independent, that, that, are, that are like, a, you know, one or three men shop. And otherwise then you have, you know, after 10 people, you, you end up, you can't be on the field anymore. You've got to, you've got to, you're behind a computer, you, you, you're making deals, you're making, you know, you, you're keeping people busy. And so, that that path of should I be here or should I be there? It sort of sorts itself out naturally in some ways, but it's it's always a challenge where you're just not big enough that you can do everything, and sometimes you're you're you, you, you have too many people that you gotta you gotta get just about everything to keep people busy, and then you know things go wrong. You have to redo and stuff like that. So always a struggle in that sense, I suppose. Yeah, I, I've I've experienced it. I've, I'm now out of the field and it's a completely different animal and it's, a, but it's a different model and it's a different yeah. ideal client. And you know, everything changes. I used to market. I'm on, I'm on site all the time. And now I market, we have scale and you know, the clients that love the owner on site, they're not going to hire us. The clients who care about speed more and, and a larger team, they'll hire us more. But it is, if you try to do both, it's, it's brutal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult and, and you always have a threshold that you have to cross and you're either afraid to cross it or you have to commit all out and then, and then you go a little bit on the unknown. And then, you know, for some people that's fine, uh, some others more difficult. I mean, having the independence to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Thursday off and, and go for the long weekend is 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 a bonus i mean you, you never stop working as you know I even mean, when you're I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you're, you're the same you know you, you bring your work at home you on the weekends you do some more paperwork you just wear a different type of shoes and you know you're wearing shorts and and that's a, but the work it gets done the, but the the independence of saying okay well i'm 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 gonna take a, a day off or a week off or whatever the guys are gonna be busy that's fine you know that's a difficult thing to reach in some ways i suppose uh and then at the end of the day is that what do you feel happy doing essentially? You know, it, it, because it, it, if you're struggling wherever you are, either too big or too small, the big thing that you have to eliminate is that you're struggling. So what is it that you have to do, you know, to eliminate that? Do you need to grow? Do you need to scale down? You know, 
th everyone has to answer the, that, that question at one point or another. Um, and it's tough. It's tough uh, on top of the work itself. It is. So can you tell me, I don't want to get into all that stuff, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm super interested to hear your origin story. Um, from, and from sort conception? Of, from conception. <laughs> what, what was that night like? Um, I know. You have to ask my parents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but how did you get into, have you always been an artist? Did that transition? Uh, tell me, Tell me how it started. So, I mean, it's, it's a fairly long, lengthy story, so I'm going to make it so we... We yeah, have three we, hours if we need it, so oh, take no. your time. <laughs> I, th I think we'll check out by then. Um, so, I, I, my background is, I, 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 my mother is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a painter. I mean, she, she, was a, she was a textile painter, but she, saw, she did a lot of painting on her own. So, I think in my youth, I was, I was sort of not groomed for the painting, but it was, it was around me. She, it was definitely where I had it, where paint was there. We, we, I used to draw a lot, you know, even silly cartoons and stuff, but it always had an, an attraction to me. My father is a business, was, he passed away a, a few weeks ago, but was a, a business, business guy, he started from the street. And I always liked that, that, that business part of things, the dealing and getting things done. And so I think on both ends, from my father and my mother, I received, equal amount of you know curiosity about the art and also curiosity about the business and when when uh right around high school at the end of high school i, I didn't finish uh i i my parents had to move for all time that's a long story that's, that's a pride story but anyway i ended up coming to the u.s where i had a, a cousin and I, I i was really not too certain of what would my future be like and i always be was interested in the uh, commercial art, like uh, even the advertisement, but the, the more the, the art part of it. And I say, you know, I like that because there's the selling, there's the business aspect of it. And also there is the art aspect, but it's art for sale. And for some reason, I, I don't know why, I always, it always enticed me. Painting, painting by yourself in the attic and trying to sell it in the gallery never interests me whatsoever. But the doing something as a, as a commission, as a contract work, uh, but it has to be before that. Uh, I don't know why, but that, that sort of appealed to me. So from, from little, you know, different, different venues and thing, I ended up starting working as a, as a graphic designer, learning how to do typesetting and logos and stuff like that. From there, again, from a job connection, they needed the sign painting done. I say, sure, I can do it, although I had no idea. So I went to the New York Public Library, got the one book, the, I think it was called the LeBlanc uh, Gold Leafing Book, and I couldn't even afford it, so I read it as much as I could. Wrote down, you know, I need this type of brush, this type of paint, went down and got a couple of one-shot paint, a few quills, and, and I had to do that sign, and I, I, I lied my way into the, I had designed the, the logo, and the, the, the guy said, can you, can you paint? And I said, no problem. And I'm, it's, it's in Madison Avenue on the second story uh, uh, building. So people could see from the street on the second floor, you know, the sign painting. And I'm, I'm struggling. I'm really, I like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm doing as best as I could. And, and I, I'll remember the story for, it's, it, it's a good sidetrack, but it, it, this guy, this, this black dude comes in, knocks on the door, you know, in the afternoon and he goes, who's the sign painter? And I, I happen to be, I open the door. I say, that's me. He say, listen, man. I'm a sign painter. I walk every day to my subway and I see you painting. A sign like this should be done in one day. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. But if tomorrow I still see you, I'm gonna tell the customer, now you ain't worth shit and I'm gonna take that job. I, I, and, and this guy, I, this is a true story. It's, amazing. It's, told, it's New York, right? So the guy said, okay, you know, put a piece of tape here, hold your brush like this. When you come down here, make it go through the tape, then remove, you take your razor blade, cut it, and you get your later. there. So I'm like, and, and, and I don't even know the name of the guy, and he leaves. So I'm doing like, and I, I swear, I worked all day. I say, I don't want this guy to come by anymore. I never saw him. I guess I did an okay job. He must have said, okay, this kid is all right. But I, that, that experience of painting that sign, I say, man, I think I found my calling. Because here I can design a, a logo, you know, there's the, the design part of it, the art part of it. And at the same time, you know, you paint it, you get paid for it. A, there's a contract. And I said, this is it. I'll be a sign painter. And so I started 
being a, a one main shop sign painter. I worked with a few, couple of people, but it was such a secretive world. Like it's funny because nobody wanted to share anything. I had a lie. I had a, I made up a story that I was a student trying to see the best in New York. I, I would come up to sign shop and say, how much we charge for this? And my client needs to know how you're going to do it to make sure it's okay. And I would pick up little things and then I look around the shop and say, oh, he's using this kind of ink or whatever and but after a while I say you know I really need to get schooled and through a friend of mine childhood friend she said oh I know a school in Belgium and they have a great sign painting program it's a it's an institute in Belgium called the Van der Kellen Institute and I say maybe that's why I should do so I signed up for that program I had to wait two years because it only took you know 60 students or whatever then I got, I got drafted, so I had to do my military service. So I said, you know, I'll sign up for the Airborne. I'll, I'll do whatever I can do. You know, at least I'll, I'll, I'll muscle up a little bit. And when I came back out of my draft, I went to that school in Belgium. And, and they say, oh, we're not doing sign painting anymore. We're doing, it's only one day a week, but it's all decorative painting. You know, marbling, wood graining, a word I had very little knowledge of. But again, attracted me again for the same reason that it was an artistic thing. There was there was there was somewhat of a rigid. It's almost like woodworking. You're learning a trade, and also you don't work without a contract. That to me was like you know it was paramount. I didn't want to be like a starving artist, you know. And it I, I, it was a really lucky break for me. And I said, you know, I waited two years. I did my mayor my military time. I I nothing else to do. Decorative painting sounds interesting. You know, I didn't know really what it meant, but it was at the time what the year it was in '86 where the computer, the cutout letters, you know, came out, and the sign painting world just collapsed overnight. You were used to do trucks and so all gone in in in, in two year times. Everybody put vinyl letters, and then only a few sign painters. Even the glass gilding, I learned that stuff. Um, but that was at the time in the '80s where the decorative painting in New York just went you know, went crazy, like people wanted sponging and all kind of thing. And, and that's, I, I kind of like shifted to that. And I said, that's interesting. But the idea, of course, it's a technical skids, like sign painting, like uh, you're learning a trade. I like that. This thing is somewhat regimented. There's an artistic element to it. You know, you could be a really great sign painting or just, you know, write down, you know, the name of a toilet somewhere. Uh, that's the difference. But the, this idea that, you, 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 you present a bid, you get a contract, you do the job, you have a certain time, you get paid. That was like, oh, this is fantastic. And, you know, I was lucky. I worked for a couple of shops not so long. I, I was very independent minded. I guess I learned that from my dad and I really didn't want to work for someone for too long. And quickly I opened my own shop in 88. And um, I did a bunch of things. Uh, I, 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 a couple of lucky breaks. I got, I got a good partner, a guy I went to school with. That was a that was a, a sweetheart of a man uh, that had his his his, his husband I mean boyfriend or husband at the time uh, was a, 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 an art dealer in New York a, 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 he had a antique shop so he knew of it so he got us a law contract and I was more of the field guy my friend was more of the front of the house and I learned a ton of things about how to deal with client with this guy how he was he was he's very suave and smooth and. But, and he knew his art, like he knew his stuff. And I said, you know, I got to really learn the trade, but not only the skill of the trade, but also the art of the trade, the, the classical style, the century, the different, different you know, um, uh, period of style. So you can, be, you can be eloquent with a client and, and, and say, okay, well, you know, this is good, but maybe we could do this. I recommend that. I, so, and with these people, essentially, I sort of, you know, I picked up here, picked up here, picked up there. And lo and behold, I, you know, I, 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 I entered a big competition in France, which was like the best craftsman of France, which I really didn't think it wouldn't amount to anything. But for some reason, I did get the, uh, I won the, the award. And uh, that helped me, not so much in New York, because nobody knew of it, but a couple of designers knew what it was. But also, it pushed me to be to always have that, that weight, that award on my head. It's like, you know, would, would, is this worthy of this award, you know? And I was a young painter. I, you know, I, I had to learn a lot of things, uh, made a lot of mistakes as well, which, which always turn into uh, a kind of a learning thing, you know, if you, or, or instead of a big drama, I say, okay, and there's a mistake, but let's take this one on chin and just learn something from there. And 
you know, had to t train people because I didn't, there was no really qualified help for decorative painting at the time. And again, I learned how to break down a technique in many, many smaller steps rather than one big difficult one and, and, and having people help me to a certain level and stuff like that. So it, it was, it, there was a lot of lucky break in some, in some ways because I, I, I was there at the right time. Um, but at the same time, I really worked really, really hard. I mean, there, there's, there's, as you know, there's no secret. I mean, it was, it was every day, every weekend, every time. And then anything I could get my hands on um, in terms of reading material, old techniques, I would just, you know, devour it, trying to decipher old techniques and so forth till, till I got comfortable and to be not only just the guy painting, but also be able to talk it up. You know, so here, this is what I think. And there's value or there's not for you, but I'll give you my opinion. All right, yeah, that's the I, that's the short version. <laughs> no, I I love it. I love so much of it. Um, Thank you. I love so so because I think that it, I know a, a a few very talented decorative artists, and the number one thing that they struggle with is the business side. Yeah, I don't speak to many decorative artists or artists in general who have who had a father, like the, you're the perfect mix, right? Like you were describing. And it, it, it's not, it doesn't seem like a coincidence that you found such success because you've, you've taken the art with a business mind and, yeah. and got the best of both. Um, I also, I love how you were talking about being able to eloquently talk with the level of clientele that you work with. I, I experienced the same thing. And I think it's really important to be able to connect and speak the same language as your client. And if you come in and you're crude and you're not getting it, people don't feel that connection. And it, and what we do is subjective at the end of the day, right? Yeah. Does it look good? Does it not look good? It, it's just not, you know. And, 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 and as long as you can argue it, in, in other words, I don't mind. It's, I, I've been thrown in, in, in a scene sometime where you have the owner, the owner's rep, his wife. Uh, the designer, two architects, a couple of people take notes, a designer with this help. And you have 15 people as your audience and they say to you, uh, okay, wh why is this, why do you like this sample? And, and the designer say, well, I want it this way and this color. And, and, you know, he hires me. So, and then somebody comes, what do you think, Pierre? And then you have that thing where you say, do I go along with the designer, even though I don't think it's the right idea, or I just say what I think, what I would do. And I always start to say, you know, I think it's a good, you know, I always try to compliment and say, I think that this, there's, a, there's a good way there. I, I'm a little nervous that maybe, you know, this could be a bit this way in the evening, or there's an issue there on that thing, uh, but maybe we can tone it down this way. And, and so then they'll say, well, why, why this, why that? And I say, well, you know, because of the contrast between this color and then the sun coming this way, you, at certain light, you're gonna, it's gonna appear more yellow than what it is. So as long as you can argument it and it makes sense, no bullshit. I, I, I don't disagree for the sake of disagreement. I just said, to me, I, I, th I see a bit of a problem. And a lot of designer react super and say, yeah, oh, that's interesting. Yes, I see your point. Show me the way it would look like. Oh yeah, you're right. And then I trust, trust in, turn, always try to turn around, making think they they came up with the idea, or the client say, yeah, I think you're right. It does look good. <laughs> you know, I just I flip it up on them, and when they have somebody, they can they can have a question and 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 they they can respond in in, in a, a, you know a manner that makes sense. They might not pick your idea, but one thing they do is they appreciate the fact that they can rely on you on this, on the pocket, you know, and say something. And and I always think of, you know, I, I'm I'm not a landscaper, I'm not a woodworker, but if I was a woodworker, you know, I want the stable with three legs because I think it's beautiful. And like I say, eh, you could, but four leg is better because it'll be more stable. And and if I were to build that three leg table and it, and it's not stable, I'll say, man, this is a shitty table. And and I would and I would say, oh yeah, I could have told you that. And I, and I would have said. Well, why didn't you tell me? If you know some things, and I always keep this approach where if I see something could be a problem, I, I'll sense it. You know, you put this varnish, yes, you got protection, it's gonna yellow. So but you balance it out. And I found it to be not only liberating, but also it really brings me up to a level where, the, 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 especially the architect, where they don't have time, they're always busy and they say, 
man, this guy, you know, it's fire and forget. I sent him every night a little report, say, we're here, we're there, tomorrow we're gonna get there. We have a problem here, but I'm gonna try to fix it. Here are the photos. They don't even ask a thing. They don't even show up and they're like, oh my God, we found the case. So my prices are higher for sure. I, I sell a, a, a skill set and a, and a professionalism that for them, they say, we want this guy, even if it's more expensive, because we don't have to worry. And being able to have, and they'll ask me, and then I, I find myself, I work with some really top designers. They say, Pierre, uh, we got to do a presentation with the color. This is a thing. What do you think for the colors? They say, yeah, we could do this. What do you think of that? I, you know, I interact and I never claim that's mine. When they say, we do this, here's the architect. I don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm happy they, they count on me. I'm happy they, they put me in the pocket when it needs to be. And, 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 and I found it to be like, they present me to the thing. This is our best guy. You know, he's done this. He's, he's, you know, he's done a superb job for that. And all of a sudden, you know, things are like, you don't have to, you know, be aware. Are they going to like it or not? And, I, you know, at the same time, you, you gotta, you, you gotta walk the, you know, you, you gotta, uh, what is it? Walk the walk. You know, you can't really bullshit your way through it. And, 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 and sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes say, you know, yeah, you're right. You know, this, this doesn't work out as well. We're going to change this. And, and when you have that professionalism attitude, even if something doesn't go right, it, it's never a big issue of, oh, you know, you're an asshole. You, you know, you told us this, this is wrong. And, and, you know, you, you work together I say, okay, I get it. Yeah, it could have worked, but listen, and it, it's rare when that things happen, but the, the plus side of having this level of confidence that I, I can step into the plate and tell 10 people that I don't know, if they ask my opinion, I'm, I'm not afraid to say this. And I'm not, without being arrogant or this is what I think, you know, I just say, you know, my experience, we had this before, there's this and that, but you know, it's up to you, you know, you, you want to, but if they say, oh, we want a green room with red pocket dots, you know, as a, I'll do it. But before I say, it, it's going to be really bad. And this is why. But you want to do it? And I'll, and I'll, I'll do it. No problem. I'll do the best pocket dots on your green background that you want. That's fine. But here are the reasons why I wouldn't do it. And now you, you're able to make the decision. Yeah, I think it's crucial. Like the, the underpinning of all of this is real competence. Like reading, devouring every book. I, I've spent my whole life studying codings and like how they interact and so when you've done that right as a professional in our trade it's not as common as it probably should be I, it you is know, not to at really all. know your craft at its core fundamental concepts because yeah. once you do then yes ask me any question i can give you an honest answer or i'll know where to say i don't know and let me go find out right and once you can speak with real knowledge then yeah, you get to be, how can I solve your problem? And you don't have Absolutely. to like, Absolutely. Like BS anything, yeah. right? No, it, 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 it's, it's so true that you, it, it does two things. Of course, it's good for your business. It's good for things, but it's, it, it's also your confidence grows. You know, when I started teaching, I see your teaching as well. And I, I know how to paint a marble and I, and I, and I, and I do it. I can do a really great demonstration. Everyone's like, Oh, fantastic. Now, how do I teach you that? So now I'm thinking, wait a minute, I got to break this down. Oh, I realize I'm lifting my elbow when I paint. Why? Because my, my, and my brush is perpendicular. So I get this flow. So every time I teach, I own my craft even higher and higher. So it's not like, oh, I'm giving my secret away. Somebody's going to do it. Every time I, I give the secret away, I actually climb another rang of the ladder. And, I, and, and now when, when I'm into a position, I have a lefty and say, oh, okay, lefty, you're, you're, you're pushing your brush instead of dragging because that's where they'd be taunting you and then you got to go the other way around. So th try this method, try that. Um, and I feel confident. I, can't, I, can't, I, I, I don't have the, 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 the anxiety of like, oh, will, I, will it be a good class or not? And, and, and the same idea when, when, you, when, I, when I talk to designer or architect and they ask me a question and say, you know, pick a color. And there's seven people here. What color are you going to pick? And I have that fan deck and I have a thousand color. Well, I go right, right. So I got, I got on the spot. I got to break it down. Okay. All right. 
So you have this, what's the fabric? It's a blue, it's a dark room, it's a night room. Is it, what kind, what is a dining room, is it a bedroom? So I'm starting to lean in, this is gonna be too strong. And I'm starting to then say, okay, I like this color. What about a really intense, whatever, agreed? Something could just pop like this. And I see the reaction, oh, that's interesting. I say, are you good with color? Or are you, you're, you're shy with color? And, you know, narrow it down and then navigate this thing. They don't know what they want, but they know what they don't want. And then, and then now we round down to, you know, half a dozen color of different hue. And then, and then I make sure also I'm very technique and say, this is the hue, this is the intensity, this is the value. Those are three different words, this color, but those are, those are, the, those are the sliding scale of a color. And so when we speak the same language now and you explain, you make that effort and don't treat it, oh, you don't know what it is. Then they like, oh my God, that's interesting. So I say, here's your blue, but the value, we can bring it down. Are we going to bring it up? And the intensity could be, you know, it comes up or it comes down. And then the color is going to be a little bit more with the green, a little bit more than that. Now, when you have all those tools, almost like a computer a screen, uh, they're starting to understand. And then, and, then, and, and then I make a leap of faith. I think, you know, I, I would do this for me. I like that. What do you think? Oh, my wife doesn't yell. Okay, okay, let's let's go this. So, but being able to do that, it's not only you know having a bank of information in your head. Again, reading books, taking pictures, constantly looking what's going on. I, I look at I, I look at the um, <laughs> a great book is I mean it's not a great book but Departure Magazine, it's like the American Express best hotel in the world. And you always, I look through these pages, you know, I go to the bathroom with it, you know, <laughs> this one I had it. <laughs> and I look and say, oh, I like this. I tear a page here and I, and I, I don't, there's no thing to say, I like this harmony of colors or, uh, and I keep that. And it's, it's in there somewhere. And I can always, always access it. But all of a sudden I say, oh, I remember I saw this thing in Thailand. It was beautiful. There's this and that. And you, and you can speak in this way. And if you know you don't know what I'm talking about, but you're like, that's interesting. I was in Thailand. Oh, what? Blah, 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 blah. And you, 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 you stitch a, a thread, basically. And little by little, you narrow. And then you can, speak, you can be in front of these 50 people and say, I think that's a great color. And they'll be like, yeah. I think that, yeah. So let's say, for, let's try it. Let's try this one. Two value down, two value up. Let's look at it. And then we start building this thing. That, that that confidence of being that it, it did not happen overnight. I mean, it, it took years and stuff. And, and, and also you build up just like the, you, you know, your different coding, your chemicals, is this compatible? Is, how thick it is? What's the mill build? All this thing helps you make a decision where you say, okay, for this particular problem, we could try this and we could try that. We, let's and, see what, which one works. And it starts with the knowledge, but, but it, that process has to start, like you said, with questions. When oh, yeah. clients, when, when people want to like just be an order taker with clients want me to be an order taker, it's like, Oh, I want to paint this room. Give me a price to paint the room. Hey, there are so many parameters that I need to find out before I just give you a price, right? Correct. What matters to you? What are the things? How are you going to be here for a while? What, how long should it last? What, like, there are so many things. And if, if I found that if clients don't want to answer those questions and don't want to go deep, they're not like, and I do the same thing. And it's actually one, one of my things because we did a lot of cold call either from the internet and something and say, oh, I'm out of children's bathroom. And I, I always tell my, my gals, I say, there's never a, a bad client. Sometimes it's a tiny thing and leads to a huge job. Sometimes it's a huge, it is nothing. But what I do is I have a list of 15 questions. And it's, do you have a designer? Do you have blueprints? Do you have elevation? Do you have clips of things that what you want? Do you have reference material? Uh, is the room, uh, do you know the size of the room? Do you, do you uh, what's the light? It, if they cannot see through two questions, they, all they all they was they're shopping, which is gonna be the cheapest price. And I ain't gonna be the one and I don't wanna deal with them. And I, and, but I'm always super polite saying, oh, we're very busy. Uh, I think uh, maybe we can recommend somebody. Maybe we're not the same thing. They, they have to understand, the, and, and I don't wanna to toot my own horn, but you, you come to the, to the Porsche dealership and you're asking, you know, if you can get smaller tire, a, a different price, so it'll be cheaper. Like I said, why are you do? What are you doing at the Porsche dealership? You, you, Could you break it, down the costs of the <laughs> exhaust system yeah, versus yeah, the yeah. paint job versus the tires for me? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> to say, do you see this thing? There's a sudden expectation. Now, obviously, when you look at a website, 
it should convey enough of that, you know, you have grandiose jobs and they get a museum. And like, people should say, okay, well, this guy seems to be, you know, on the higher scale. But a lot of people now with, with, with a phone, they just say decorative painter in New York and there's 15 names. And I always, one of the questions said, did you call anybody else? That's, you know, I let him talk and I say, have you, have you spoken? I said, yeah, a couple of people. I said, okay, fine. But I never know. Like I, we start some jobs with some really big client and it was like a shit job of sending things. And then we ended up doing a living room, dining room, their house in the, this, their house in that, their house in London. It would, you know, and I told my crew, I say, yeah, that's not a great job. That's not a fun job. But as, as, a, as an owner of business, I don't know what's next. I don't know what next month is going to be. And this could lead to a huge big job. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And so I'm never like, oh, you're not for me. You know, you're, 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 you know, you know I, don't, I don't want to be dismissive and arrogant. I hate that. I hate, you know, it's like the guy with the clipboard in front of a club. But at the same time, if you can't answer the 15 questions, and, and it's boring to you. I had GCs, like, I said, how big is this? Do anybody, he said, yeah, you guess, the guy told me, you have so many questions. I never had anybody ask me any questions. And I said, man, yeah, that's the way I work. I feel, I feel, you know, I feel sorry that you never had anybody ask you any questions. And he said, oh my, you're so complicated. I said, no, I want to make the best job for you, man. And I want to know that, is there going to be five people cutting, you know, cable in front of me when I paint or will I have the room for myself? I don't think that's a, you know, uh, irrelevant question, but if you yeah, can't it's see not that. It's just paint. Yeah. And no. if you think it's just paint, you are not that, for us. Exactly. We, yeah. we, we have, a, you know, again, and I tell my students, I mean, when I say, how much do you charge for this? That what I charge for this square foot of this is not, you know, it's 30, it's, it's the 35 it took, 35 years it took for me to charge that. So I don't think it's fair for me to answer that question because you can't really compare. But when I start, I was a little more hungry. I want to, I'm not less discerning. I needed to get my hands in. I needed to make the mistake. So I wanted to get, I wanted to conceal. I don't do any samples that I don't charge for, but I reached that level where I, I said, I, my time is limited. I only have 10 hours a day. If I start making sample, every time you ask me a sample, that's all I'm going to be doing. So you want to sample, there's a fee. If, if you do the job, then it's credited to, to, the, to the job. If you don't, the sample is still mine and you're paying for my time. Oh, nobody does that. And I say, that's fine. I, I, I can appreciate that. I don't have a problem with it. You came to me, I didn't come to you. you know? And so we get that conversation. And, and at the same time, I've also no client that say, if it's not very expensive, I don't think it's a good, it's a good job. You know, for some reason they equate the, the value that you charge with the quality of the job, which should be somehow related, but <laughs> even I know that's not always the case. Um, I think that's interesting too, because a, so a lot of the, the artist mentality yes. struggles to put a value on their time, right? They struggle oh. to like, you know, they're give, 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 give. And you're like, hey, what you're doing here is valuable. There's only one of you. Like, I'm always like trying to like coach up my decorative artist. I'm like, come on, like, you are a rock star. You've got to charge for the time it takes to do the R and D, not just the time it takes to do the work. I, I, you know, and, and the other, the other thing is like, I, you know, I say, Oh, you know, I can, I can, I can, I can make, you know, a hundred dollar an hour. And, you know, and I, you know, I've done this job in five days. I made five grand. I said, that's fantastic. Now what happened the, the three weeks before that, that job? Well, I was, uh, you know, whatever I was looking for jobs and say, so in fact, what you did is you made $5,000 in a month, not in five days, because the, the three weeks prior to that where you didn't work, that's that five days, that pace rate. So you got to look at it and divide the number of hours till the next job by that job. And that's your, that's what the, your value is. A lot of people do not understand that. I mean, you know, especially when you're in a field where you have to hire people, so oh, I want to, you know, X amount of dollars. And I say, Ooh, that's a little steep. Uh, yeah, that's what I made the last time. But said, but when was the last time you had that job? Because obviously you come to me. Otherwise, you would, I would only maybe me. I would come to you. So you, you, I said, how do you not understand that if you make bank in four days, but then you stay three months with? Well, that's my choice. I want to do this. And I said, then your your value is three months plus the five days divide. You know, and divided. That's the, the ten thousand divided by three months. That's that's what you should get paid per hour, I suppose. And we, we, we have that issue all the time. People don't think of, of, the job is almost the easiest thing. It's before the job, getting the client, 
getting that, your reputation, this and that, and you build up into it and then go on to the next job. It's that's like what I, I love it about this is I always say I'm a recovering craftsman turned business person. <laughs> like that's a good one. <laughs> I, I love the craft. That's how I got into this. It's in my bones. But after a while of not having any money, I started to be like, all right, I got to change because this isn't working. And yeah, it's, it's generally people who love the craft also don't love looking at the bottom line and looking at the QuickBooks and reports and but it sounds like you have overheads yeah the whole thing of the math about what is the end of the year p and l look you, like what what do you bring home and, yeah. and, and 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 i i think you know or people say oh my god you look at the contract oh you'll make those so much money i said wait a minute i'm in new york city i have a, I have a, I have a building i have a staff my insurance is, I, we pay almost 30 grand a year in insurance. You have medical, you have this and that. So it's not just that job. I have to divide all this for the full, that's a full year. It's what's left at the end. You know, some people get it. Some don't, don't get it. Um, there was a funny thing. I mean, a little sidetrack, but it's, 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 it's on point in, in this thing is that uh, I had a discussion, somewhat of a heated discussion where, you know, I was doing a lecture on business lecture with a bunch of Deckard painters. And I made a point and say, I, I really don't want to be called an artist. And I said, why is that? I was not director. I said, because I'm a craftsman. What's the difference? I said, what well, is a major difference? I mean, and I say, it's recent because up till the 19th century, every piece of art, every, the, like, almost like the, the, the Mona Lisa, the most iconic Western uh, civilization type painting, Everything was done with a contract. Being an artist was a contract that you was artistic, you create a thing, but there was not one painting, one sculpture that was not given to, to be done without a contract. It didn't exist. It, the, the, the idea of you're gonna paint a bunch of things in your attic and then hopefully somebody gets in the gallery, that did not exist. Even the galleries in the 18th century where you had landscape or religious scene, there were there were there was somebody in the shop that had a master. I say, okay, you're going to paint Jesus, you're going to paint the uh, a Roman ruin, you paint it. They was he would pay his employee. They would bring this, and it, it was it was exposed into because there was no photography. That was the, that people would buy painting like this that that were not commissioned, but they were commissioned by somebody else to bring to the painting. So that did not exist. That concept, I do what I want, and hopefully it sells. And then in the 19th century, the term artist change artists in, in italian is working with your hand it's the the etymology of the word and also an artist became you are bohemian you work in your studio you do something nobody understands you rebel against the academy and hopefully you know you you're, you're the next Van Gogh or something like that and then all of a sudden now artists took a completely different name and it became that sort of more you know, loose cannon thing, but all the, even, 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 even a Picasso went to the, his father was one of the best painter in Barcelona teacher for the Academy. The guy could paint a portrait at 14 years old of his parents, like nobody's business. He chose to do cubism and things like that as a rebellion, but the core of it, he knew how to grind pigment. He knew how to do this thing. And now it's a different story. Like I'm an artist and I, I don't want to bother with the craft, but, but, but even an artist that goes to an art school, and I'm, I'm, I'm floored, my son went to an art school. How little did they know in terms of the craft? And the craft is, you know, is oil compatible with this? How do you grind your pigment? What is, what is paint? What is, what is a binder? Like the, even the basic, it, no, it's more theoretical, you know, put a piece of donkey piss on a stick and, you know, put some lights on it and that's, yeah, that's your, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. You I'm can't not, I'm not tell a, me what's good. Yeah, I just I'm did not, this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a judge or the guy I put a banana with a, with a duct tape, uh, you know, and if somebody wants to buy it, that's fine. It's, I have no problem with that. I'm not against artists. I, I, everybody got to think, but I cannot qualify myself as an artist. I'm, I'm a craftsman. I learn a trade just like a woodworker. We learn how to plane a board and cut it and chisel it. And there's some guys that all they do is a table and chair simple for, you know, the, the, the regular thing. And there's a guy that does like, like a clock in the, with a carved legs. And so on. that's the artistic part of our work, but still both, know how to plane, know how to sand, know how to stain. I mean, hopefully they would, uh, and so forth. And, and, and I made a big, a big thing because, because as a craftsman, it, it implies a knowledge of t trade, a technology, but also a business relation with my client. 
there's I don't I mean I do things on my own when I'm trying to you know come up in the kitchen you know you know some 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 development so how can I make this and that that's that's my thing but that allows me to go and say hey by the way I could do this I could do that but I I I, don't, I cannot do one thing without being told this is what I want I actually work better the more uh, 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 Parameters. Bar yeah, barriers I have. I, I, if I'm left in front, like, and I say, do whatever you want, I'm like, I don't, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I have so many ideas. It's just, they, they, they don't come out straight, you know? Yeah. So if they say, I don't like blue and it's a kitchen and I need to be, uh, you know, a certain, you know, whatever style, then, I can, then I'm, I'm prolific. Um, I guess I wait and I get excited about this because I, I, there's nothing wrong being an artist. That's fine. If you know that what an artist used to be, which is a contracted painters, every single thing. And, and, and this is what we have now. So we are artistic, but first and foremost, we're a craftsman. We, we, there's a technology based system that allows us to be artistic. And I, and I'll say this even better is I had a lot of artists, you know, went to art school, fine art school and did all kinds of things. And they come to me and, and I say, you know, this is a, everybody wears a uniform. This is a regiment, it's more a military operation. And, you know, sometimes there's a problem, but they, and, and sometimes they leave after a month and say, you know, I couldn't take you, this is too much. But they always say, you know what, I've learned so much. And I say, I'm giving you tools that you can use in your own painting. You, if you know how to glaze, you, you know, you go spray paint. If you know how to texture, you can use that in your own painting. And, it, and, 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 and I think the classroom now is lacking that. It, it's lacking that, that, that it's theoretical, it's, it's esoterical, and also in anything that's more, uh, that's not conceptual, that's actually technical becomes, who, who, you know, who cares? It's also idealistic, right? I, I always, I think like idealism is not something I'm allowed to have in business, right? I have employees, <laughs> I have a family, and, and I don't get to be idealistic about what should be. No, I have to adapt to the market, right? I have to change. I didn't like where things were going in my life and my business. I had to adapt. I didn't, I didn't get to complain about the world. And yeah. That's the thing I think sometimes those artists struggle with is, Hey, this is not a, you don't get to make all the rules. You have to have a patron. You have to have a buyer. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's part of growing up. And, and you could, and I, and, you know, I say you, you could own more marry to it. You could say, I, I don't want to use, I want only use, you know, product that earth friendly. And so you can, you can still marry your conviction and idealism in your work. There's, I don't think it's mutually exclusive. It's not easy sometimes. Sometimes you have to work with client you might necessarily have. But if you say, I don't want to work for a guy that, you know, produced petrol or whatever, or sells gasoline because of this. You have the choice to say, I don't work for you. And, I, and not only that, but I'm going to tell you why. And that, that would be a better statement. But if you do, and you do a beautiful work, it, it, you know, or, or somebody that you're not affiliated politically with, uh, you're still doing your job. So, you, 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 you know, maybe you're too busy. Maybe, maybe your idealism is, is the best of you. And that's fine. You can live with, with, with what you, you don't need to concede. You don't need to really say, Oh, you know, I, I, I my values are now gone because of that. I think you can marry the both. You can, and, and you, you have to be intelligent in other words. And, and, but, and but that, if you have no work and you have no money, you can't keep saying, I'm only going to use donkey piss to do my art. <laughs> right. Like your analogy before. Yes, I get like there are certain things where you can say I'm going to I'm going to stick to my morals up into a point where there is a market for that. If there is no market for what you're producing, you know, at some point, something's got to give. But but, you know, the other thing is that I know I, I mean, and we, and we talked this off, off the air uh, uh, <clears throat> when, when we talked the first time a couple of weeks, <clears throat> if I had to choose. And I, I don't have to make that choice. Being a very good craftsman or a very good businessman, <clears throat> the truth is that you better be a very good businessman before you're a very good craftsman. Because I know some really talented craftsmen that are the worst business. I mean, they couldn't sell blood into an emergency room. And they are miserable. They, they can't do any of the things because they're, they're horrible businessmen. And I know people that could you know, sell, you know, send to a Bedouin, as I said, that are killer business and horrible, horrible craftsmen. And they always come out on top. So again, 
you can you don't have to be either you know of the opposite scale but i think a, a good craftsman must have a a, a, a minimum amount of, of professionalism and, and business savviness in order to be successful. Because this, if you're not successful at what you do, you're either going to quit or you're going to be resentful or you're going to say, you know what, I, you know, uh, the world hates me or whatever, whatever the story is there. So you, 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 that business part, and the business part is not so much knowing how to count. I mean, that would help, obviously. But the business part I'm talking about is, is your, your relation to your client. You say you're going to start on Monday and you're going to be done on Friday and you actually do that. And you don't show up at 10 o'clock say, you know, I'm not inspired. I'm at three o'clock in the morning. Kind of got, you know, uh, that doesn't cut it. I mean, there are some people of mine, but most people, they like to have their job done on Friday as you promised. And if you could do that every single time, you will get the call back, you know. And, you and know also, it. you don't have to be an, an entrepreneur. You can go work for somebody. Absolutely. I, I see a lot of people where I'm like, hey, I, I, like, I think you might be better off being somebody's number two or being their mechanic, like you were saying, have, being in someone that executes. But if well, you don't want to have the business side, maybe work for someone that will. Yeah. The, and it, it's important. It, 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 you know, uh, we we're discussing the also the other day is that, you know, for me, 90% of my work comes from either referral or repeat business. 90%, 90% of my work is referral or repeat business. And then the 10% is not me going with my portfolio like I used to. I used to go and knock on the door, look at what I do. Is that somebody say, hey, I heard this job, you should talk to this person. Or the architect say, hey, by the way, uh, we heard something about that. And, and I'll, I'll do a little pitch. But for the most part, that repeat business, I had customer for 30 years, and sometimes it's 10 years in between. And they call me, oh, I got to redo this room. Oh, you did this last time. Oh, my, my sister-in-law loved this, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, there are some small jobs, there's some big job, there's some medium job. And then you got, you, and you got anything in between. You know, I'm not just, I only do this type of job and only in this city and that. You got to be, you, you got to, you got to, you, you got to be willing to, to do it. And that's how I think part of the success of, 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 of my operation is that, that ability to say, you know, uh, here we go. I, this morning I had a phone call from friends that say our big designer is coming, is going to LA this Saturday and uh, Monday we have a meeting in San Francisco. Can you go there? And I say, man, that's my weekend. I'm going away in two days. Uh, forget it. That's, and I think about it, I say, man, this guy's a big fish. It's a huge job. All right. I, you know, I call my wife and say, hey, honey. But she's used to it. <laughs> I always say, bad news. And she goes, okay, where are you going? <laughs> and I said, I think I got to go to this thing. It's, it, you know, I, I could say no, I suppose. I, you know, um, but I'm, I'm also attracted. I mean, I get, I get excitement about, hey, I'm being called to go to LA in two days, you know? Well, you know, it, it, it may not, it may not happen again, or I don't know. I, I doubt it. But there's part of me is like, yeah, it's it's my weekend. I, you know, uh, I I don't really want to do it. But part of me is like, man, that could be a great job. You know, so it's one of those things where it, it's it's a bit difficult to. I mean, I'm having a hard time saying no. No is a, is a word that I, I I don't try to use, especially in business. You know, always like. I'll do my best. Let me see if I, what I can do. And there's that sort of being conciliatory, like, no, no, I don't want not being dismissive. So that's a big thing. And then the other thing is that the chase is interesting that they, they, you know, Oh man, that could be, that could be really a great job. And it, of course, financially, there's always, you know, I, I don't do it for the social, you know, greatness of decorative painting in this world. There's always that, but overall, you know, being asked to do this, that's an honor to me. I, I, I take, I take this as a responsibility that I, that, you know, somebody call me from France and say, please, you got to do us a solid. Can you do this? Can you meet with him? I know it's last minute, but you know how to talk to him, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, that's, you know, maybe, maybe they rubbed my fur in the right way. I guess I'm a sucker for it, <clears throat> but there's a point where our, our work is, is, is bigger than, than our, it's, it's, I can't turn it off and on and opportunity. I mean, you know, and you know, you ask somebody say, show me your photos on your, on your iPhone. And, and mine is like, 
98% are job related. And there's three pictures of my daughter and a dog and things like that. And then, then you know that, eh, you know, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone into the, 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 the painting world to the point where there's no return. But I like it. In other words, I, if it comes to a point where I find it to be a grind, where I find no enjoyment, then I know I'm done. I mean, I, or I'm done, or maybe it's time for me to do something else. And luckily, with, with you know the the consulting, I've added an extra layer of business things for me that are very interesting. I treat get treated super well. You know, I'm asked to you know questions. I try to come up with a solid problem. Somebody else is going to do it, but I, I'm 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 make sure, make sure you do this, make sure you do that. I really like that. It's something that I that I that I didn't think I would either was value, valuable in terms of a skill but, or that it would be a market for it. But there is such a thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, it, it, I always try to, you know, I always, I love to use analogy, but one of them I like to, to use best is like, I'm, I'm like a, I'm like a three star Michelin star restaurant that has only five tables, you know? So it's a small business. I, I do a very specific thing. It's high end. I cannot do a wedding for a hundred people. It's, it's, it's above me. I can only do this. And I know that it means that, you know, at four in the morning you get your ingredient and you start cooking and you, you, you cannot have the same menu every time. And you, and you have to take care of your customer and you have to give them an experience that they will come back to. And, 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 you know, I, I think there's enough cooking show and shows on TV where you can relate to that thing, but I always thought of that. That's, Every time I see a chef like this, and you know, they always are thinking, you know, what I got, how can I better myself? How can I make, how can I maintain this three stars on, on, you know, or fourth star Michelin or whatever it is? Um, our, our business model is almost that it, it's, 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 there's a moving post that always, you, you always have to, to, to get to you, you, you hit a standard, you sit, like you do a job like incredibly under amount of pressure, and then the architects say, oh, but you did it already once, so now it's going to be even a more difficult thing. And you, you, and you find yourself that it's very difficult to regress back to a point where, hey, you know, it was nice when I just, you know, I, I started at eight and I knew at five was over and I cleaned my brushes and I would, you know, not think about the next day. It's a concept that I don't even understand anymore. You know, I'm like, I'm like, I wake up in the night, I'm like, oh my God, we gotta do this, we did that. But part of that analogy that, that kind of got glazed over is, it's not about, just the, like at a three-star Michelin restaurant, the food is not enough. Having great food is not enough, right? No, they spend no. all of that the time on the front end yeah. and yeah. the experience, and and that's what in my business, that's what we focus on a lot. Because I again, I'm a recovering crafts person turned business person. I'm trying <laughs> to understand that I don't. I've stayed at clients' houses till two in the morning working on the best trim package I could possibly make, but then they didn't hire me back for the next one. And I had I go well. What the heck? I gave you the best paint job known to man. Oh wait, I was there till one in the morning. No one wants that. And when you start to pair great food with great experience, great service, now you're That's, onto something. Yeah, and 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 the presentation. I mean, you know, I I, I spent we spend a lot of time taping and preparing. I have like, I said, why are you taping everything? I say, because when I'm done, I peel everything and it's not a drip. Everything is perfect. There's a little touch up here and there, but nothing major. And then when the client comes in, even the GC, when the GC comes to you and says, man, you guys are organized. How many times I heard that? And I say, oh, I must be doing something well. And everybody has the same uniform. They all wear pants, white pants and a t-shirt. And it's not like do whatever you want. If, if the thing is dirty, I say, Tomorrow you bring a brand new pair. I don't want to see you in those things. And then, and we have a, you know, the, the setup time. I spend a day on the setup, the table, the paper, everything is, you know, have a little shelving unit. And then when the client comes in here and the GC and say, whoa, those guys, they're like, they're the class act. I see the value now. And everything I do after that, they have that, that positive vibe. Whereas like, you know, bags everywhere, stuff on different floor, guys that, you know, you don't know who is who. And, and they're like, oh man, there's going to be another one of this. So again, that, that, that idea of that, that's not just the food, but the presentation, how you wrap that package, how you behave on the job site, you're on time. You don't go, oh, I got to smoke. I'm on the phone all the time. I mean, I'm on the phone. I got these. I can I use my hand and I got these. I can talk and paint at the same time. And 
that perception, that initial perception. And again, you said you come to a restaurant. Oh my God, look how beautiful. Look at the tablecloth. Look at the glasses. It prepares you for the meal. But the, the exact same meal at a McDonald's table would not taste the same, even so, though it's the same this food. This is so good. Because I, I, in my classes, I talk about this in depth. I call it the mm -hmm. sommelier effect. Where the yeah. same glass of the same bottle of wine in a Dixie cup in a back alley tastes very different <laughs> than when the guy in this beautiful place <laughs> with a chain nice, and it, yeah. he's dressed right, he holds the bottle a special way, tells you a story. The exact same bottle of wine is fundamentally different. Different. The experience is going to be different. And as, and as long when the contractor knows, when I have a problem, I come to him and say, listen, you have a problem here. This is not ready. You get to get it. And I give him a list. I'm, I write lists every night on my computer. I have a program that I made. And do, 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 do. is the room. Is that, here's my question. So I come in the morning and say, I got my list. At first, I'm like, what the fuck? Sorry. What, what the <laughs> hell? You know, this guy, who do you think you are? And the third day, I say, hey, Pierre, where's your list? Do you have anything for me? They love that. Like to, that I am involved in, in the process that to get things ready for me, they have to do this and that. And we, you know, sometimes it's a bit of friction, but quickly, you know, we have it out. And they see the value of that, and they and 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 they they say, man, that was that was fun. We had a good time, and go out to dinner or something like that. It and 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 as you as you project this idea, and it, for me, it's not projecting like I'm faking it. it that's who I am. But I'm 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 thor if the guy's in there, I say, hey, you have a guy cutting here. I'm walking out. Oh, well, you everybody does that. You got to work with. We got to play with the team. I say, I'm not going to play with the team when the guy. I told you to get this room ready, and you got a guy cutting now the floor. And I'm painting, and I'm. That's going to slow down my process, and the the process, the, the 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 finish is going to be different, and I'm losing my time here. So I'll go to another room, and when it's ready, I will come back. Well, you, I said, believe me, it's for your own interest. And so, I stand my ground. I I'm, I'm I, sometimes a little abrupt. I, I would say that, but there's a there is a respect. There's, they understand. They they say, you know, okay there's a point there and I don't nitpick or thing. I say, I do this. I'll take care of this for you. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, this problem, I'll make it go away. And after a week, then, then, then the, the machine is oiled and things are going on. And sometimes, you know, you know, it's, there's always something and then you're like, yeah, it's going to be is one that, of those. Now, is that something that you've learned? Like I'm, I'm on a project right now, fairly large re interior repaint, high end client. Mm -hmm. And the GC is like, wants us going. Right. And I'm like, we don't have a paint select schedule selected yet. And, mm -hmm. and they're like, really want it. And I'm like, we have learned last job and the job, like we've learned if we don't have all the colors selected, we're not going to be very efficient. And like putting my foot down, I'm being nice. I'm not being very abrupt like you, but I also don't have the amount of leverage that you have with your, you know, years of experience. Was that something that you had to learn the hard way to get there? I, I, you know, I, I, I've never been to prison, thank God. <laughs> and the one thing I learned in the film is you, you go to the biggest guy and, and you knock on the mouth and, and maybe you get a beating when they say, this guy is a tough son of a bitch. And, you know, this is not a right analogy, but I, I know one thing is if you don't say nothing, they will take a shit on you every single day. That's, it's just, it's, it's human nature. I, I, I don't know how to put it. But when you state your thing and say, this is not acceptable, and this is the reason, and not, not being to be, a, a, you know, a, a difficult person or a diva. So, oh, you're a diva. I say, maybe that's the way you perceive it, but the reality is this, this, and that. I can, I can tell you why there's a step. And if you have a guy in there and you told me I don't want to get, and if it's not prepared, that messes up our mojo here. And I'm here just for 15 days and I will be finished in 15 days. And now you're going to look good when you tell your client, I am finished. So it is for your interest. Yeah. So I learned this because I, I, I have a great designer that always send me in the jobs that are not ready for me. And they know that I can push and push and get it done. And so the more I get it done, they send me to the job that's least and least ready. And it becomes now, you know, when I told you about, you set up a bar and then you cannot go back. And so, and so you have to, you know, and, and maybe also spending some time in the army where, where you, you're a draftees like you and you're a sergeant, you had to tell them, you know, you got to carry your pack for 20 kilos for, for fucking, you know, three days aimlessly because there's, there's no war, there's nothing. And you got to motivate them and they are about to, you know, put a shovel on your head, you have to, you got to find a way to say, 
we're in this together. And, and, and so when I go to this thing and I, and I'm, and I, instead of telling him at the last minute, I sent him a list of things ahead of time. And I said, did you get this? Do you receive our list? Will this be ready? I'm arriving on Friday. On Thursday, I call him, did you get this thing? And I like, what the hell is this guy? But when I come in, they're like, okay. Uh, and I say, oh, this is not ready. You told me this was ready. We got to do that. Put two guys on this now. I'll do that. I'll give you the list on this. So they're like a little bit taken aback. But at the same time, they see value into that. And, and, and again, you have to wind up, you got to find that tight rope where you can be too much or too little. But if you say nothing, you will get the guy that when you finish your ceiling, say, oh, I forgot to put a sprinkler head here. I'm going to cut it and. Oh, you high gloss. I'm sure you can touch it up and say, no, sir, I can't, but you will repay for it. And that gives a thing. So I, I think with that, it, always that thing of being abrupt and too, you know, and rigid and, and say, listen, we have a problem. Let's talk how we can do it. Try to, on the man to man, mano a mano, as they say, try to solve that problem. Um, it, it works out. And, and I, you know, I work a lot in the South and in Florida and then we're in New York and, ah, you know, the, you know, there's a big stigma in there, you know, big diva and stuff. And within a couple of days, we, we have it out and we have a couple of beers and stuff. And they, they're like, oh, Pierre, what's going on? This and they, we try to establish a rapport and I, you know, tell them jokes. I'm, 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 I do a little dance or whatever I think to break the, the tension. And it seems to be, you know, I, that's one thing I learned is that, you have to be, you have to be a chameleon. You have to behave a certain way with the designer. You have to be a certain way with your client. You have to be a certain way with your architect. You have to be a certain way with your with your tradesman. You have to be a certain way with with your 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 GCs. But you're the same person. You're just wearing a different hat, you know. And so you have you have to you you know I'll speak a little, some Spanish, so I do a little dance with the guy. Say hey, you know I I I, I do stable phrases I know and. The, and they breaks the tension, and the guy they feel at ease working with you. And I say, "Hey, man, you know, you that me, por favor, me, 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 falta un poquito de pintura." Oh yeah, sure, blah, 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 blah. you know. And then, so you, you go on a level essentially, and and not as a not as a, you know, I'm above that. I'm I'm not. I'm, I've, I come from nothing really, but I also can sit down at, at an architect at a big meeting, fifty people, and then argue something about the 18th century, and I can back it up to some degree. And I just said, "This is, you know, this is what I would do. This and that." And and having this confidence, even when things go bad, that there is a way that works. Now, I'm sure you have. You've, you've found guys that are just like strict and assholes, and and then you then you then then it goes bad. I mean, we had a GC in England. He was a he's a, he's a he's a he was a dick from day one. And I said, listen, man, you don't understand. I flew in this morning. I I, I got five people. I'm starting to work. Oh, don't worry, it'll be ready tomorrow. I said, no, no, it's got to be ready now. Oh, and then the entire job was like this. But then, then I said, you know what? He's gonna play a game. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be even more. I'm gonna top him up. Whatever, maybe, maybe, maybe it'll throw something at me. I don't know. Um, and there was some time where things weren't went well, and others it was just it was an asshole. And I said, you can do it. I said, I don't care what you're saying. I don't listen to you anymore. I'm doing this room. You can leave. And you can talk to my client. Here's the phone number, and you explain to him why I cannot work here. I'm, I'm not. De I'm dealing with it. You you just don't understand. Uh, so you have those highs of drama and those lows, and 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 anything in between. You know, you try to avoid any of this thing. But it, it's a, it's a learned skill, I guess. Say, you know, there's you have to feel the. I, I you know, I I'm not a I'm not a, a, a seaman or a navigator, but you. You get you see the water, you see the wind, you see this thing. It's a good day for go out. I kind of show you. You 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 build up this sort of anticipation that eh, that I had to watch out for this one, or you know I got to be strong-handed right there with this this character. He needs that. Oh, this guy, I got to play a different different type of game. Is it? You know, and it's not as calculated as I make it sound. I think it's just I'm just compiling a bunch of experience into one sentence. But but there's a little bit of that, you know. We we I inherited a job that was a total farce a, a couple of days ago, and I have to make up for lost ground from another guy, and you know, I, I got to play that game as well. I apologize, even though it's not my uh, nothing to. I apologize for the bad experience. Let's see if we can do it better. I'm here. Let's let's do that. I have a question for you. So I'm I mean I'm assuming you so you went from somebody commission paying you to paint a, a sign. 
to mm -hmm. traveling the world working on some of the most insane projects going what was Absolutely. like <laughs> I, I how do you like how did you ratchet up like was it a like a slow steady ratcheting process of like higher level projects higher level projects higher level projects was there like a breakthrough could you kind of go through that because like that's kind of what I'm always studying. I mean, obviously, as you're starting out and, and, and you aspire better than what you actually can do, and to be quite honest. Uh, and the one I meant is the king of the blind people, you know, as they say. So I was a little lucky in New York and the thing where, where people I knew decorative painting, like classically trained decorative painter, there were just a handful of them. And I was one of the few. But I didn't know a lot about the preparation. I didn't, I, you know, I worked in, you know, a little panel. Then now you're translated in a full room. That's, you know, all of a sudden things are uh, different. You have to adapt. You, you know, as I said, in the, in the school I went to, I learned the alphabet, but I didn't know, I didn't learn how to put a, a word or a sentence together, much, much less a book. Uh, that knowledge is, is, it, it increases every job. So you, you always take on something a little bit more difficult, more challenging, and you solve the problems. The, the 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 you know so I used to do baseboard in in on Park Avenue you know or or, or lobby of of of, of a, a high rise you know and they wanted some marbleizing and and you know I would go with my little box and then we work with those ladies that would just you know drink you know Chardonnay while they watch me on my knees painting and like laughing with our friends and you know you you've had those those really I don't want to say traumatic experience but experience where. Where, where the designer say, oh, you want coffee? You want coffee? And they look at you and, and they go, what about you? And then you're like, you're an invisible. And, and you're like, oh my God, I'm, you know, and, but instead of being like, oh, you know, I, you know, I'm envious. I hate those people. I say, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I don't present well. Maybe I, you know, uh, yeah, I, you know, there's something that it's, and, and you build up, you say, okay, next time they're going to ask me for that coffee. And I'll say, you know what, I'd like an espresso with a zest of lemon in it. Shit that I really, I don't want to, but just to say, oh, oh, and, uh, and make it my cat, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and all of a sudden they're like, oh, look at this little guy. And, and when I was 24, I looked like I was 12. I had no hair. I mean, I was just like, <laughs> I mean, it really looked like what, what in the hell is this guy covered in paint and stuff like that. Now, over the years, obviously, you know, I met some really great designers and then, but at first I started doing a door for them and an elevator door. And I said, well, that's really nice. I said, oh yeah, I mean, we could do this. And then, and a little baby will say, what about this? And then they start feeding me. And then to the point where now <clears throat> they know what, I'm, what I can do. But at first that process, fortunately that process is gradual. And I, I'll say to the people who are listening, if, 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 if all you do is an elevator door or some that type, that's your or doors, you know, cabinet, kitchen, and all of a sudden someone say, hey, I have a, a big banquet hall, you know, it's 100 feet by 20 feet and I have all the beams and painted, can you do that? And you got to think, wait a minute, I'm going from one cabinet kitchen to this scale. That doesn't scale up that easily. There's a model, there's a thing, Maybe, but... Here's an opportunity. Maybe I should hire somebody that knows. Maybe learn from them. And there's a lot of things where there's things I didn't really know. I would try to get this person and 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 just pick up as much as possible. Maybe I didn't make a lot of money, but I the the bank of knowledge was was big. Um, you know, I wrote a couple of books, so that increased my my thing. When, and and again, when I wrote the, my second book, I said, you know, I should be teaching. I don't have any brushes. So then I start importing brushes. I said, well, it's not importing brushes. I may as well sell them. You know, so those are little steps that kind of open up a new world. And then when I'm teaching, the first time I'm teaching, I'm like, oh my, I can't sleep for three days. I'm, I'm, I'm about to vomit, you know? And, I, and here I go on a, a, a marble and they're like, oh, great. How do you do this? And then I'm like, okay, well, I use this at this color and this, and then all of a sudden thing deflates. And I say, okay. And I start to own my craft little by little, bum, 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 bum. And now I, I, you know, I'm going to Korea in a few days to teach in Korean. So that's not my first language, obviously. Uh, a class of 20 people, hardcore painters. I, I did the curriculum. I have no anxiety. I, 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 you know, I'm like, I got this. And I, I know, you know, I have that feeling like they can't go wrong. We, we, we're teaching the union painters now, the, the, the same thing. We go with union teachers, 20 of them and 15 of them. And they're union through and through, you know, and I'm not. 
uh, and I'm telling him about labor situation, things like that, and how we do, but I'm concentrating on the craft. I don't get bogged down in the things that are not my, my business. And they're like, best class we ever had. My God, you know, usually we're behind the screen and we fall asleep. I, 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 I say, I'm going to, I want to give him a quiz. And the guy say, don't give him quiz. They're union. I say, well, that's how they're going to learn. And they, at first they, I say, okay, a little quiz now. And they're like, what? A quiz? You know, like 40 year old people are taking a quiz. And we made it fun and say, okay, how do you do this? What, what's the color of that? And they loved it. And I said, okay, quiz time. And everybody was like, yeah, yeah, quiz time. And, you know, we, we, we try to break down this thing. So you start small, you start increasing, and then you have a big challenge and then you figure out how to do it and you're going to make mistakes. And, 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 it, but you use that, you know, you, you, you use that to your advantage. I, I have here a piece of canvas. It was 15, 17, um, actually more than like 25 years ago. I went to a job to measure a ceiling and I wrote it on the tape, the dimension. And I went back and I did the canvas and I, my fives looks like a six. And I brought my canvas and my foot shorter. And so now I got to do the entire thing directly because I'm not coming back to New Jersey or whatever. And I, but I learned that lesson and I keep that canvas with me. And everyone said, what is this canvas? I say, that's a, some memory. I'm, and I, I always, I, you know, as I'm talking about it, I'm not even, I can, I know exactly what, where it is, what color it is, all the detail. And it, so that was a valuable lesson. I didn't, I lost money. I, or maybe I didn't make any, I don't remember exactly. But that idea of, I had, I made a mistake here. And, and recently, you know, a year ago, I made the exact same mistake. I, I, I was, I had to rush out of the thing. I wrote it down a piece of paper. And I inverse it. I'm dyslexic, so I inverse two number, and my canvas is missing a foot and a half as I'm installing it. And I said, "I get this. I'm gonna remake that that section here. Blah blah blah. Nobody will know better." And I learned something. So each step you climb, you know, there's always sometimes you you know you miss a rung, you you stumble on, you you go, you you climb up back up, and and you make and but. After 10 years, you've, you've built up a wealth of knowledge already, a good amount of knowledge, because the, the one thing I want to say to, 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 to people listening is that I never relied on anybody else. I mean, I sometimes, you know, edit this, but I always try to do the thing. And that, that makes me own my stuff, because if I sub everything, then I don't learn from the, from that. So at first it was like, always, 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 always doing it, doing it, doing it. And then, Oh, how do you do this? Hey, this guy's doing the floor. That's interesting. What product are you using? I sometimes take a little picture of a note saying, what is this guy? You know, they want to be secretive. Um, and, and so that process is gradual, but you have to be very careful. As I say, where if there's too much of a jump from where you are now to what you're going to be asked to do the next time, that's the greater amount of, of problem that you're going to have to, to, to deal. So some people say, I, you know, I've, I, I've got the backbones, right? But other, that can break you. You got to be, you got to, you, you may say, you know, maybe I'm not there yet. You know, it's not for me. And that's a good answer, you know? Yeah. Cause reputation is built over, slowly over a period of time and one mistake can really ruin it. Yeah, I always say it takes 10 years to do a reputation. It takes one bad job to ruin that. So, you, you, you know, and, 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 and it's true. I mean, I can sit here and say, there are some things where I'm not super proud of and I squid by because time, because uh, all kind of issue. And I say, Oh, I don't know. This is just on the cusp here. And uh, should I redo it? Should I don't? And, and then also notice that I'm the most critical person. I see things that no one else sees. And, and I don't want to go on a job and say, oh, forget about it. Nobody will see that. I'm, I always think I see it and that bothers me. But there are times where I'm like, do you see this? And they're like, no. That thing here? No. All right. Maybe, I'm, maybe it's okay then. Um, but I, I, I never rely on that. I, I don't rely on the, on the fact that, you know, somebody might not see it. I always want to be, it's got to be done correctly. And would I be okay with it? And maybe I got an extra day and that, you know, and I feel loved. and somehow I feel like it's a, a weight lifted off of me. Like, you know, I'm happy. And I, I reach another level. It's like a video game, you know, I'm at this level now, you know? <laughs> um, and with that, what you talked about earlier about your masking, that's a big thing that we, when I, I teach my guys and I teach at the school, like we are putting on a performance as much as we are protecting the surfaces, right? 
Because the client's oh, yeah. going to come through the zip wall at night and they're going to see and they're going to be like, wow, look at all this. I made a post once where I, I jokingly used the laser level to, to let, make our, our tape lines on the floor. <laughs> and, and, but it's serious because what I, then when I talk to the guys, because we do a lot of high gloss and, and, you know, it's a subjective thing at the end of the day. You know, we're not doing automotive paint and cutting and buffing to yeah. perfect, right? But if we have done every single step of the process amazingly and we have continued to perform, then yes, we, we have bought ourselves a little bit of leeway at the end, right? Where the client isn't going to with the microscope to inspect and, everything. And, and, and I'll, I'll go one better is that if, if everything is, is protected and, and, and the client happens to come up on the fly and say, oh, I got to you know, see something. And I say, oh, that's nice. Their perception is that you were clean. And then if you work clean, you do a clean job. If you do a clean job, it's going to be a beautiful job. And if it's a beautiful job, it's going to be perfect. And, and so you, you, you're, you're staring at them into their – and I've, never, I've seen it before where the, the, the designer comes with their GC and they say they didn't do this, didn't do that. And then everything else is shit. What about this? What about that? This door is wrong, blah, blah, blah. But if they say, oh, everything is ready, this is on time, blah, 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 everything, all that, eh, this is not so good, but – you know, the rest is good. All right, let's redo that. And every, it's the same thing. It's like that, that wine in the Dixie cup or in the sommelier. It's the same wine. But the way it's presented makes a huge difference. And then all of a sudden, when they're in good disposition, you know, if the first room is great, that he look, oh, perfect. The color, everything is tight, good. They go to the second one. And then the third one, they're like, okay, well, that's going to be my, my expectation. It's going to be great because the first two one were great. If the first one is a mistake, like a blatant mistake. No matter what, if the second one is perfect, it's still not going to pass it. Because the sacramental expectation is to be, well, if you didn't, couldn't do this right, how can you even do this second thing right? Or was it an accident? Maybe it's good, but I'm looking for a mistake now because I know if you did that shit before, for sure, this is, there's no way you're going to pull this. Uh, and you're absolutely right in, in that. Yeah, it, the, the tape protects, but it also project the fact that we are taking care of your valuable, your house per se, or your room. We, we're considering that is valued enough, that is worthy of not only the tape, but the brown paper and maybe the plastic film to go with it and the double layer of paper on the floor and the drop cloth and a plastic on the paper. So if there's bucket of water, it doesn't go on your floor. That's what we think of your house, that it's, that it's worthy of that. And yes, there's a cost for it, for sure. Yeah. Because it's got, it's got you know, it costs in manpower and it costs in materials and stuff like that. But the yield of that, what I call investment, there's no money that can buy that. Because the, this, this, this perception that the GC, and GC is going to be the guy you're going to see, and the architect and the designer, and they say, man, this, those guys are clean. They will remember that as much as they will remember the beautiful glass ceiling. Because that, that was wrapped in a beautiful package and bow. And, and you're absolutely right with the Somalia uh, attitude, it, 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 analogy is that you can, you can, own, you can do the best job. <clears throat> and I've seen there's, and there's some French crime I know they're killers. You got a cigarette in his mouth and it's like this. And he, you know, he can't paint oak like nobody. But when you see that guy, it's like, my God, what a slug, there's shit everywhere. You know, he pulls it off because that technical skills is right there. But the presentation is so awful. And it's like, what, is there anything else he can do? And, <clears throat> you know, and the other way around is like, you can have like a really beautiful presentation and not so good product, but it'll still has a better echo and, 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 and broadcast than, than the other way around. Just like the, the great craftsman that has zero business skill or the big business skill that has zero craft skill. Who wins at the end? Yeah, it, and that's that's the part <laughs> that took me a long time to learn, you know, because I was an idealist, idealistic craftsman when I got into this business. And, you know, you, but eventually you start to listen to, you realize you're dealing with humans, right? And reason, you know. Yeah, and, and like logic is not a thing. Like, like we've all experienced, <laughs> like there's a time where there's a threshold where you can lose a client and never get them back. Right. I did a gloss ceiling one time and it, it ended up being equally as good as, a, as the gloss ceiling that we had done the one before. 
And I, the client at the end didn't want to pay and was like, would you show your other clients this ceiling? And I was like, absolutely. I think this, this ceiling is beautiful. But we had blown the experience. It had yeah. taken much longer. There had been a couple of mistakes that had happened. But the experience that the client had gone through was so bad that subjectively they, they were drinking the same bottle of wine in an alley behind a, a bar. Yeah, and, and it ain't as good. And it's just not as good, even though <clears throat> we know the wine is the same. Yeah. And that was a very formative experience for me where I realized yeah. like there's a certain point where you can just completely lose a client and never get them back. And it's sobering because in your heart, you say, yeah, I had some issue, but I, but I made it. I, I came through and I, I'm really happy with it. But yes, yeah, there was some extra step that could have been avoided. And maybe it's my fault. Maybe, maybe you know, bad luck or whatever. <clears throat> it's how you recover. You know, I've done a ceiling and, I, and then on the last thing, we, we glazed it and the things started yellowing. And, the, and, and it was for, for a friend of mine. I hired me and, I, and I, he said, I don't know. And I said, and I said you know, I think... In my head, my head is like I don't think the client will ever know because you know, it's it's it, that's not something. But he knew, and I said, I'll tell you what, Peter, I want to redo it because I think you're right. Like this is not the right way, and it it really pained me. And I was like, you know, I was like, eh, it was just the last day before the building shut down on COVID, and but we redid it. But and I and I felt super good about it that we took it upon ourselves to redo something we knew was not up to snuff. It made my friends, and my friend and I, and I said, there'll be no charge for this. This, this is on me. I made a mistake. I, it was a product I used that, you know, it turned yellow, whatever. Uh, I had an electric glaze to kill it. Just like, it just, it didn't work. And, you know, it, we still work together. He, he, I, I know he's appreciative that I went to that step. You know, he lost a few days, but he said, you know, I came through and it was, there was, he appreciated the fact, but more importantly, even if he didn't appreciate it, I appreciate the fact that I that I did that. And yes, it was it was painful, as 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 things can be painful like this. But I learned a lot of things. I learned to thin my shellac even better. I learned not to use this varnish. I learned to make sure when I work, my guys are listening exactly what I say. And this and that. so, you know, overall there was no money in my pocket, but there was a, a wealth of knowledge that. I, either will you utilize on another job or most of all, I will make sure I avoid for the next time. And that's, 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 that's the, that's the core of our thing. Uh, one of my clients told me a great story once and I, and I use that in, in my business uh, uh, class sometime because it, it, you know, it's a Jewish guy and he, and he, and he, and he, and he said, Pierre, you know, you should, I, you know, if you do your business, I'll front you the money. And he, he, I, I love this guy. He passed away a uh, time ago, but he told me a story. He said, I'm going to tell you a story. Cause he, cause I, cause I, I said that, you know, I was doing a job in Long Island and I say, Oh, it'll take three days. And, and I'm thinking, shit, he's going to think, you know, five grand, three days. And wow, he's going to, he's going to buck, you know? And I said, uh, I think maybe four. They say, it doesn't matter. He said, if you do it in one hour and it's the, the way it is, I'm happy. I'm, I think it's worth the money. And someone tell you a story. They say, I had a, it, it's made up story, but I, it, it was, it was charming. He said, I went, I had a, my appendix removed and I, I go to the doctor and I said, my appendix need to be removed. And the surgeon say, okay, no problem. 20 minutes removed. He gets a bill, $20,000. What? So he goes to the surgeon. I understand. I mean, it took you 20 minutes. And he has twenty thousand dollars, and the surgeon goes, "You're not paying for the twenty minutes that it took to remove that appendix. You're paying for the thirty years it took prior to that. So it only takes twenty minutes for that, and then the next day you're in my office complaining about the bill. That's what you're paying for." And I thought his story was absolutely brilliant because it really encapsulated this thing. This is not what you do per se. I mean, of course, this is your skill. But in all this wealth of knowledge to avoid that you're going to go septic or the, or the or stitches are going to crack or whatever, and, and that it's beautifully done and it's removed surgically and in 20 minutes you're in and out, that's what you pay for. So yeah, there's never a thing where I feel now because of that saying, oh my God, you know, I'm changing all this money for only five days worth of work. But really is that how long would it have taken me to do the same job when I started? Two weeks? And I always come back to that sign painting. It took me four days. And that guy came up to the window and said, 
man, if you don't finish this thing tomorrow, I'll take that job away from because it's a one day job. And, and that, that idea of that y- you pay for the work, but the, 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 the thing that it's not an, a known entity is all those prior years of struggle, those mistakes, that ceiling that you, you screwed up and all that stuff. So the next one is better. And that's, that's and not only the guys in this and the presentation and that, but all this experience is the value of it. And, you know, and sometimes I tell my client that story and I laugh about it because it's, it's such a, you know, Jewish New York story, but I think it's perfectly on point and it really illustrated where the journey that it's taken to build up this, this knowledge and, and, and this confidence to say, I will see you on Tuesday and at 10 and at 1030, you'll be in your recovery. I know it's going to be good and you will be happy with the surgery. And so, you know, Sometimes when there's those moments of doubts and, and, and things, you know, you, you have those little stories that come up and say, you know, I can make this happen. <laughs> We've, and I, I think that to that point, it's, it's the years, but it's also like we, my competitive advantage as a company now is we are a low risk, high quality option, right? Oh, yeah. you're, when you hire my company, you're not taking a gamble as to whether or not this is going to get done the way that you want it. And so could you find a, a, a guy who could do the level of work? Potentially. You could go out to the market. You could talk to 100 painters. Maybe you get Cheaper. me 10 years ago. Yeah. We're, mm-hmm. we're pretty rare, but there's, there's some really <laughs> dedicated craftsmen <laughs> that are obsessed. And they're, when I first started out, I was giving deals of a lifetime. All my old clients. I mean, man. But today, you hire us because we are a low-risk option. And that's the that's, years of experience. That, that's an excellent way of, of putting it. And it, it's a very uh, pragmatic way of putting low, low, low risk of business and then and high quality to, to boot. And, 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 and you have those clients that just say, well, but yes, but this guy's, you know, 30% cheaper. Yeah, well, sure. I, I, and I've had it a couple of times where the clients say, well, you, you know, you're truly, you know, you're the most expensive. Somebody comes on the phone and say, oh, you know, you know, I've had five people way cheaper. You're the most expensive. And I say, then you should really use them. And as a matter of fact, I can actually recommend somebody that probably would be cheaper than those guys. It's completely your choice. I, I, I understand completely. But again, you came to the Porsche dealership. You see the sign in front of the thing. You, you, what you want is a, I don't want to say Hyundai or whatever, but a, a different car model. They're very good cars. Um, that's it. And there's no wrong choice. Not everybody should be driving a Porsche. Not everybody should be driving a you know, Ford 150 or whatever. Whatever is your jam is what you do. I, 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 I know I can do it. This is this minor. If this is, if you think we're not compatible, this, this problem, I, I don't feel bad. I, I understand, but I cannot go through the process and explain to you why, 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 if you, you by yourself don't, you're, what you're looking is for the bottom line because there will always be somebody cheaper and somebody higher. And I always say, it's just like a car. There'll be a faster car that'll pass you on the highway and it'll be a small car. You'll be the F1 driver. There's always somebody that's gonna be faster and faster. Where are you in there? Where do you wanna be? I can't, that's your answer, uh, not for me. I don't, I, it does, I'd love to do your job, but I'm not gonna, not because five other people have a cheaper price, all of a sudden I, I have to lower my standards for you. I, I refuse to do that. And the, it's not the only like problem with that analogy, I, the, I love the car analogy, but the only problem with the car analogy in the painting business is Hyundai still has to pass a bunch of regulations and they are a legitimate company. In the painting business, there are a lot of guys that aren't at all legit. They've passed no criteria. I just left a job right before here where the client had brand new garage doors installed. They were improperly painted. They are now ruined. I, I told her, like, I can probably do this. I'll do the best job I can possibly do. I'll give you a paint, best paint job, but I won't warranty it. So now they have to go and they have to file an insurance claim on their brand new garage doors because they hired a painter who f- put the fundamentally wrong coating on and didn't seal it on all edges. And so at least with the Hyundai, it passed <laughs> yeah. the, like, government regulation yeah. for safety. Yeah, yeah. But what I what – I, and, and again, Honda, I have a, again, I, oh, we're, I, we're beating I have, up on I have it, a I Subaru. I'm, I'm <laughs> happy with my Subaru and my Toyota. But what, I, what I'm saying is that 
when when you get phone call, I always tell the girl, I say, tell them I've written a book, tell them I do the Getty Museum, tell them I work at the risk. I, and I don't, it's not to, to, to toot my own horns, I don't care. It's just I want to make sure they understand that our price uh, 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 schedule or the way we price our job is based on all that. It, it can't, I cannot take that out of the, the package. You know, we get, we all, you know, a uh, failed uh, question from Brooklyn. So, oh, out of lobby. I've seen, I've seen your thing on the internet. And I say, Hey, I tell them, go to the 15 questions. If they can't answer that, we know that's not for us. And if they say, yeah, no, I still want it. I say, tell them to say it's X amount per day is usual our average thing. And, and then I see when I get my dog, oh my God, they have this sticker. Brand. But I'd rather have him now than in the middle, you know, like the uncomfortable thing is my, oh my God, this and that. It, it, and it doesn't mean I'm, you know, I'm worthy of that or unworthy or whatever. It's just that we're, right now where I'm at, I need to do this type of thing. That's what, that's, that's my jam. And I have a certain status and, and I have an operation and, and, and that's, that's the part of it. And it, it's got to be tactful. You can't, you know, the, the one thing I say is, be, you know, you know, I've, I've had too many times when I get turned around at the club, you know, I'm not on the list, you know, I don't look the right. And I, I hate that, that feeling. Yeah. And I don't want my client to experience that or potential client. But I, I say, you know, here is, you know, this is, this is what we do, this and this and that. And, to, and again, with the 15 question, I think that's a good way to do it. And they get the idea right away. If they don't, then we start doing a little bit of pricing. So, and eh, this is about the ranch it's going to be. And either they never call or they call back and we, we take it from there. Um, but yeah, too many times, you're right. We, we, you, you, you cannot compare apple and, and oranges for the same thing because, you know, we, <clears throat> we're in New York City. I mean, my, I have to... Our, our real estate is expensive. Our insurance is crazy expensive. The buildings you cannot get in before nine o'clock. You get up at four o'clock. You get a six hour day out of the guy. You know, all this thing is, 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 is got a factor in my billing. I can't, I can't be the same thing that I had a friend of mine right in New Jersey is, he's just at across the bridge and, and his insurance is a 10th of mine. He does the same business. His real estate to get a 5,000 square foot warehouse for three grand a month. You know, so, I say then, you, you know, start working in Manhattan, I guess. <laughs> uh, you, you, and it's you, also supply and demand. Like you said, you, you understand the business side enough to go, I only have so many hours this year. I'm going to auction them oh. off to whoever wants to pay the most. And, hey, you know, because you with, can't. With the caveat, I'm going to stop here. With the caveat that. I also don't have two prices. I like I hate to say when you when I go a pack of butter at the supermarket, whether you're Jeff Bezos or, or a homeless, the price of butter is still say two fifty or whatever. I don't know what a price of butter is, <laughs> but uh, so so to me, my price structure is based on square footage, and you know, and obviously when I work for Bezos or, or Bill Gates or these kind of guys. You know, I know there's a bit more meat on the bones. I, I you know, I'll, I'll fly a certain way. I, I, I can add a couple there. I can pad a little bit. But, but I, but I work through a designer. I say, well, you know, this exact same job was, you know, fifteen thousand uh, dollars last month, and now with this client, it's thirty. I mean, how, how can I justify that? So for me, the price is this. I don't make a difference. And then people say, oh, you know, you should hammer it up. These guys can't afford it. Uh, yes, I guess sometime you, you could. I, I. I I never think of it like this, and maybe it's stupid. This is maybe bad business. No, but I, I think that, that that fits my point is like, no, it's just here's my here's the going rate for what we do. I don't care. We, we've worked in houses that cost $250,000 and did the same level of work for the same labor rate as a $20 million condo. The house price isn't what matters, but our time is the same. It's worth the, the same. same in both yeah. places. Yeah, it's true. And I mean, sometimes you're like, oh my God. And you see the, the next guy, the contract, they're like, you know, a half a million for, for, for one window. I'm like, what the hell? I mean, I'm in the wrong business. Um, but I ne I've never been envious. I've never been, you know, looking if, you know, at other contract. I do my thing. I, you know, you know, sometimes say, you know, maybe I should raise in this. I, I do my, 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 my consulting. I live well. I, you know, I, my life is fine. It could, you know, sure I could, I could, I could do better, I, but I could also do worse, you know? So it's, it's one of those things where it is a motivation. Absolutely. The financial aspect is a good motivation for me. I don't, I, I've never claimed, I, I, I do it for the greater good of, of the decorative painting, you know, social order. I don't, I don't, I don't care. Even though I do a lot for that with, 
with talks and books and whatnot. Um, I, I still want, I do my thing and, I, and I'm happy to do it. And I, I make a very good living because I have no complaint. I work really hard as, I mean, you know, what, something, oh, what's your best advice you could give a strong, a, a young decorative painters? They work your ass off. I mean, I just, I mean, there's no shortcut that, you know, uh, um, when I started, there was not one decor, not one old gizzard you could come to and say, hey, man, how do you do this? How do you do that? They, they were all in France and England or Italy or whatever, but not in the U.S. And so I, I would go to a museum and take a picture and I'd look at a piece of marble and say, how did they do this? How is it possible they were able to achieve it? And I know it's done fast and I can see the brush strokes. On, and then I break it down and I practice and practice until I figure this out. And I've And probably one of the reasons where I got to be I think very good early is because I had no help whatsoever. And I had to use my hand and say, how do we, how would you do something? Like and then when I would get help, then I would know the right questions. And I was struggling here. I was struggling in there. So rather than having everything, you know, filleted and stuff, I say, I know how to fish, but this one eludes me. How, what, what's the bait you use in there? Like I would like a very specific question. I, I even, I even a couple of times in my life, I went to, to France and I offer my services for free. And it, but I said, I pick the company, I pick the craft that I'm working with and I, I want to know what I'm doing and you don't have to pay me. But I want to work with this guy and I want to see how it is that. And, that's, and I will take notes and I'll take pictures, I'll tell you right now. And they always paid me because they were super happy with my work. But I learned a tremendous, it's like going to school. It's like uh, for free almost, you know. Um, but that lack of, of immediate access to knowledge uh, was a really great factor of, of uh, an incentive for me to learn. And I, and I think, you know, I don't want to sound like, oh, in my days it was better, but now with, with the Instagram, and we're on that platform now, it's like instant gratification about everything. If you cannot get the information within 20 seconds on your phone, you, you sort of give up. And, and I think that's, that's that, you know, there's, there's hundreds, of, you know, press full marble on YouTube, you have a thousand. Like everyone is as bad as the previous one. But how do you select if you don't know? How do you cipher to this mess of, of knowledge, you know? So it's almost too much. And so, as you say, you go back to the books, you, you learn about, you know, oh, they used this thing in, in 1930s, they had discovered the cellulose uh, compound. What were they using it for? What was the use? In a, so you build up your information, you, you pick up from those books you, that are useless now because the, the materials are different. But there's always a piece of information that, that decipher a certain system and say, oh yeah, I see why this is layered this way instead of that way. Um, and, 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 and I think that's, that's, that's an issue that's been plaguing the, the, the art and the craft world is that because it's on YouTube, you think it's valid. You know, it used to be a book, you know, and, and, then, and then the book industry, anybody could write a book and it was, you know, the source of information was diluted or even wrong. Uh, and there was no, no, nobody to say, oh, don't listen to this. And now, you know, we do program and then, and, I, and the biggest thing is that, oh, it's a three day program. Can you do it in one day? It's a, it's a month program I do in three days, really. Um, but I know the attention span. I know that, you know, people are taking the exam for the, for the, for the DC painting or for the, for the scenic paintings. They, they, they have to learn, you know, so I say, you know, Three day wood graining class is, is to, it's, it's, it's almost laughable. I mean, I'll give you all the basic you can do, but if you don't practice or, or they say, oh, I don't want to buy a brush, I have my thing. I said, but why are you taking a class? I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I don't say it like that, but my head is like, you, you, you want to spend $9 on a roll of tape that you throw away and you don't want to spend $20 on a good brush I, and you use a cheap brush that you throw away. I, I don't even understand the concept, but if I can't even, if it doesn't, it's not apparent to you that your, your thinking process is completely distorted, who, who am I to convince you? You want to use a, 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 you know, a cup gun to, to do a ceiling because it's, it's $20, at, you know, $450, you get one at Home Depot. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. Or you get a SATA $950 proper you know, gun. gun. And, and, and that, and then, and then that, that delivers the finish. So when you have that much of explanation to convince people, the good founding of using the proper, just the proper tools. And that is already a struggle. Imagine what taping is like using a proper tape or, or this quality there. And 
it's beyond the scope. And I, and I think on, 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 the, on the topic of teaching, that's one thing sometimes I struggle. I say, my God, you know, out of 10 people, there's like three of them. I say, Jesus, I don't know why, why are they in this class? It's just, it, they obviously, they, I don't care or they don't, they don't take any notes that, it, you know, it's just like I notch on my belt. I've done this, you know, I went to a movie almost. Uh, it's a neg it's a passive information there's no exchange um and and it, it's been it's been a problem i i think lately again just because oh i can learn on youtube blah, 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 blah. and then there's a lack of um sorry there's a lack of uh of thirst for knowledge because there there's no struggle for knowledge you used to, mm. we know when you had to you know when you had to go to the public i don't want to sound like a, a million years old i mean it's you know the internet is relatively young, but everything I had to do, I had to go to the public library, get an index card, get the book, and then maybe, you know, it was the wrong book and bring it back. And there's one misly black and white picture and you're like, what, what the hell, what am I looking at? But, it, it, you know, and it's great that now you have this information, you know, accessible with, on the thumb, but that effort that I made to research what was a quill, the first, you know, what was the first can of one shot that I bought is still with me today. And, and, it, and it built up the foundation of my knowledge. That's not all of it, thank God. And I'm happy that now if I look for, you know, 1930 posters of bar in Paris, I can type it up and go, I have 15 of them. And they're great, they're helping me right now. It, it's much faster. But having able to, um, Somebody wants to buy a brush. Hold on. <laughs> um, Go ahead, answer. I, I, Go ahead, answer. Yeah, but, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. This is, this is... PFI, how can I help you? Hello? Okay, so here's a funny story. My number is one digit off from the, um, the line to get the food stamps in New York City. I, I had that, that Sherlock. So it's 888 is my number and then 800 da, 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 is the same number for the so I, I constantly get no i didn't get my foot stamp <laughs> so now i know at you know 8 30 i don't know if it's going to be a, a decorative painter that's looking for for a brush but possibly who knows anyway <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's that's why i get this phone ring but anyway to go back to our thing is that the you know everybody get their own journey and, and it's a very personal thing, you know, and, and, and there's no shortcut, unfortunately. That's, that, that's, I uh, love that. And that's what I think people need to hear this because I, I get, we, I teach classes and I get million, I started teaching classes cause I was getting the same question hundreds of times a month in my messages. And then I was like, Hey, you want to know that long drawn out answer? Really, I should teach you in real life. Or you can, for fifteen dollars a month, you can join my private Q and A, and I'll verbally say it to everyone at once, and then they disappear. Or the yeah. number of times that I'll I'll make a post and someone will ask a question that the answer is you just type it into Google, <laughs> right? And I'm like, well, man, I, do I have to tell you to Google this? <laughs> I, I'm not Google, and and it gets frustrating. But then there's also plenty of people who've come to the classes who have dove in, they've understand. I like what you're talking about with your classes is you've condensed it down, right? And I've done the same thing. We do a two day course. It's a ton of information. It's conceptually driven because you have to go back and practice. And yeah, practice there's, there's, and practice. there's no, there's no short, short, shortcut for that. It, it, the, the, that's that, you know, I, I'm like sure it's for, for when I class, I, I say 5% talent, 95% practice. And, and you know, I say, oh, you you like Picasso? You're talented. You know, your mother was a painter. Yeah, I, I had I had I had of some visual clues that you know that made my eyes more aware or cued to it. But everything I learned, I, I some, there's some master that said, you know, this is this is paint plus this one equals this one, and is that. And then after that, it's just practice and do and doing mistake. And why is this? Why isn't this drying? Why is this crackling? What is that? And then if every mistake you make, and and you make as many as you can when you're young, then you build up on that. It doesn't mean that you're immune. I mean, I still make mistakes. There's no question. I mean, nobody nobody's left the level. So are you a master? I don't know. I don't even know what that means. It's sort of like, you know. 
who is a master, who is a, who is a journeyman, who is this, that. I don't think you can rank people in some ways. But in your own skin, in your own level, you know, if you know that you're 10 times better now than 10 years ago, I mean, every year you, you double your thing. And that's, that's really your, 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 your measure. Wherever you started, and it doesn't matter where you start, is that it's every year, you, you, you know, you add, you add, you add. And that's, that's really, you're on your own master based on your own journey. I, I can't, you know, when I, 10 years into my thing, I thought I was, you know, pretty good because I, you know, I'd written a book, I had a best card from my friends. But the fact is, that, yeah, I, I always had the thing, I still have a ton to learn. And then I start teaching and I was like, oh, it opens up even a bigger thing. And then I have another, you know, I started doing teaching online, which I'd never done. It's like, this is stupid. Who is going to sit through, you know, phone and watch somebody paint and, you know, COVID happen and say, oh, okay, maybe there is a thing. And then now I got to talk to an audience that is completely non-responsive. You're talking to a camera, you see your face at, or your hand, and there's no feedback. There's 80 people listening, no feedback, nothing. And you keep on talking, you say a joke, there's no laughter, you know, you hope it's funny. <laughs> you hope somebody, you know, gives you a little, you know, little symbols, but I can't even watch because I'm painting. So I had to break down my system of painting live with painting online, which is, you know, it's the same thing, but you're gonna break it down, you, you know, I'm tight in here, I, I'm, just, I'm working just on an easel. But even that was such a great, I, I progressed so much on my marble skill by doing that, by being confined to a chair, almost like a, you know, like on a wheelchair bound. I don't know, you know, if it's a good way to say it, but, and uh, again, there's things I was struggling, I had to break it down to, just so now it's just looked at it from a tunnel vision, you know, instead of the, the big pyramid. That, I learned a ton of things like this. And again, I, somebody had asked me 10 years ago, could you teach a class through a phone? I said, I, you're mental, it's, it's stupid. But now with COVID, people are receptive. There's a Zoom class we're having now, we're having a chat, we, we, we're you know, a thousand miles away and it's completely natural. It doesn't feel like, oh, it's weird, it's forced, it's, it's bizarre. I see myself talking, which is annoying, but uh, uh, it's part of our, you know, that's, you know, we're evolving in another step, you know, is it, is it a plus or minus? I leave others the, 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 to answer that question. But as far as we call it a craftsman, yes, we have another way to communicate and have a talk and say, hey, how do you do this? So I say, you know, when I do this, I turn this way and, I, and then you'll take, oh yeah, no, no, but take this way. Like we had a, one with the first time we talked, we were over the phone, we already talked within 10 minutes shop and what gun are you using and what is that, what compressor? And I'm on, I said, oh, this is great. I didn't know about this one. You know, there's that, that, that exchange that, that wouldn't have been possible um, years ago because we didn't, that technology didn't exist. But it's the, 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 the flip side of it is that that's not the, all, all there is. I mean, this is great. This is fantastic. It's a little hard popping in there. So I don't know what that means, but I think it's, you know, that's good. Um, but I, if you limit yourself to this, that's nothing. If you limit to just the book, that's nothing. If you limit yourself just, so practice this, that, the Google, this and that, all that is a one big package. That's really a, a, a full comprised thing. And I, and I think, the people that are learning that want, that want a fast way to learn. There's no fast way to learn. I mean, you, 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 you're talking about, you know, well-known painters like Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, those, you know, Raphael, uh, uh, Michelangelo. At, at 10 years old, they were working in a shop and grinding pigment and drawing anatomy for 10 years before they can even touch a painting, they even look at it. So, of course, we're beyond this, you know, child labor kind of intensive uh, learning. But the core of it is the academy, the foundation, the, those artists, which were, you know, I would say now craftsmen, learn a technology-based, unbelievably full of knowledge. It was just, it was not a, a, a six months class in some obscure, thing. it was it was a 10 years thing. And when you achieve that, when the master would say, okay, I'll let you paint that little tree in the background and that little house, and that'll be it. And you'll be happy with that. And you're not paid by the way. So <laughs> on top of that, um, we, we, we have this thirst of knowledge and we have this access, to, immediate access to knowledge. How do we deal with it? And, and when it's a craft, when it's a manual labor, 
the TV screen is not going to be the final. You're going to have to put your hand in the paint. You're going to have to work over your head on the ceiling. You know, understand what 10 or 15 feet span is like when you're upside down on the ladder. That, no amount of video is going to teach you that. Until you I, I like the analogy in. of uh, you can watch as many videos about how to do a push up as you ever want, but if you need to, if you want to do fifty push ups in a row, it doesn't happen from watching videos. Correct. That's that's fantastic. You it's, know, it's well it's, said. It's, maybe it's fine to get the rough stuff, right? Get some concepts, but if you're not going to put the work in, and day after day, and and do the samples, and 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 make the mistakes. Now, you can come to one of our classes and I can shorten the learning curve, but I can't Absolutely. teach, I can't teach yeah. for you. I can't, I can't download the skill yeah. into your head. Yeah. And, and it's the same thing. It's, oh, I'm gonna, I don't want to buy a brush. And say, that's fine. I mean, I don't know how you're going to do wood graining without a flogger, but, but you know, it's up to you. I, I don't know what, you know, if that's the, you know, and, but yet you'll go out and take, drink five beers that you'll piss away within the hour, the nearest portisan what's the logic in that you know invest in your craft investing in your craft is inst investing in in your in your in the knowledge taking classes going youtube whatever putting the time into it getting the proper tools and you'll see it makes a difference but if instinctively if you don't think that's the good way of doing it i, I mean again as you say i can show you how to do 50 push-ups i mean i won't be on maybe 10 <laughs> but at the end of the day um if if you don't start, that's all you. You'll be a good watcher. That's that's about it. Yeah. Um, it it always come back to to this 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 thing of of being a professional or an amateur or where you are that. You know, I don't care to give label. I don't. You know, I I, I belong to 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 some sort of sort of in membership, but a, a group of, of painters we gather every year around the world, paint the decorative painters. And you know it's, it's become an old man club. It's just being annoying. And and they have a problem meeting young painters. And I say, based on what? So this lady, she has a van with painted unicorn, and she does you know you know children's bath bedroom and things. It's not my cup of tea. Some of them are not as good as, but she's working every day. She has a van. She has a customer. She has a client. She did, she is as bona fide as a decorative painter as I am, as far as I'm concerned. That's there's no level. That's like it, you don't have to be, uh, uh, you know, a Michelangelo to do a, a Sistine Chapel to be a painter. There, there's no. But if you're professional, you have your van with your phone number. You have a business card. You deliver a job, and and maybe you're happy painting a little unicorn, a little balloon in the kids' room, and that's your that's your jam. You're a decorative painter. You're a master of your thing. I have, a, I have a good friend in Long Island. She she's got into painting the brick with with lime and stuff. She's busy as she's the heaviest busiest woman I know. She's on Instagram all the time. She promotes. She has she has ten jobs ahead of time. Okay, and and she does murals and stuff like that. And some some people say, oh yeah, but she doesn't know how to do marble. She doesn't. She doesn't need to. She's a professional decorative painter. She makes money. She has a client. She has an Instagram account. She does it. She is a master painter in her thing, and she's happy to do it. And I I see her, and I'm like I'm in awe with her. Now we don't do the same thing. We don't have the same client. That has nothing to do with that. Your your, your level of of greatness, I guess, or or, 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 or skill set is made also on your customer base. You know, not everybody needs to paint the Ritz or whatever or the museum thing. That's not your job. But if you have your your, I had a girl that she was a sign painter of Nikki from Flora, super sweet girl, and she started. She took a wood grain. She said, "Oh, I don't know. I think I want to take a wood grain class. I'm a sign painter, but I'm tired of the signing." And but I nobody use nobody used wood grain in Florida, and I said. Well, that's perfect then. And she goes, why? I said, because you'll be the only one wood graining in Florida and you'll be getting all the jobs. She goes, yeah, that's an interesting point. So she took the wood grain and the first day she had to go to garage doors and she grained a garage, you know, those impressed, they already have an embossed, a design white and whatever. And she did like a mahogany success. And the neighbor, oh my God, who did this? I want the, the entire street. And then the, and then the neighbor, and then she, the, all she did that, almost like a super, 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 and I say, I told you, Nikki, this is it. And now, you know, she said, now this is that much for the door and she's, she's lining up. The, she found a niche and I say, that, a, that is a bona fide decorative painter. I don't care if she doesn't do marble or ornament or 18th century French, who, who cares? 
but she's professional. She has a van. She has her business card. She gets her client. She delivers a job on time. That's what makes you a professional painter. And I think some people confuse all the time your 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 mar your mastery of technique with your clientele with what 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 you can do. And and, and if you do bathroom and things, there's nothing wrong. It's the same thing with the with the with the uh, the, the Hyundai and the Porsche. They both car. They both passed all the different you know uh, uh, whatever uh, technical thing to be say yes. This car is safe. And there's nothing wrong with it. And actually, there are more Hyundai on the road right now than every, every, every portrait, if you really think about it. And so I think when, when we have an audience of people that say, oh, will I ever be like you? You don't need to be like you. Don't, you don't, I'm, I'm glad, actually. Not because I need the competition. It's a difficult life. But if you have a good market, you do your sailing, you get the gloss, you get it, you get it down pat. You, before the job ends, you know exactly how it's going to, you know, all the stuff. That's your thing. You don't need to do a, 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 a sky and an angel and that. So, so, so something things get mashed where where you can only be called this label because you can do that. And I and I think that's wrong. That you can be master of your of your particular trade and do perfect leaving and have a bunch of employees and 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 do that and 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 be satisfied with it. You know, uh, and 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 this 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 artistic knowledge and thing. Yeah, maybe maybe something have maybe some maybe you don't need it. I don't. It doesn't matter to me. It does. It, it's not a requirement. In other words, having having the knowledge. But whatever you do, the only thing is whatever you do, you have to do it professionally. You have you have you have to deliver on time. You have to know your skill. Whatever whatever your your jam is, whatever your market painting bricks or whatever, that you got to do the best painted bricks that you know how to do, and that's how you you're the master of this thing. And maybe you say, okay, now I'm ready for the next level and so forth. And, 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 you, and your, your, your thing grows or you can stay at the level you're happy, but then get more employee. There's no wrong or right. As long as you always follow this, this, this ethic of work, the code of ethic of, yeah. of, of, of the business, the respectability, uh, of the, getting all your insurance, treating your people correctly, calling your client correctly. Don't try to, to screw people for the sake of doing it and think of the next and next thing. Yeah, I like the idea because I, a lot of people see us do, we do like six to $8,000 gloss doors, right? Because I live mm -hmm. in a market, we're lucky to live in a market where there's there's a demand for that mm -hmm. and people can afford it. But if you are in like where I grew up in Kansas, there's not a market for that. Yeah. But craftsmanship is taking the parameters that a client gives you, taking the skill set that you've built over time to deliver the best possible product that fits that parameter. So if a client comes to you and says, I, you know, or the market says we have a thousand dollars we to spend on a gloss door. Okay. Now you craftsmanship is using all of your years of knowledge and skill to give the best to make that thousand dollar gloss door there ever was. Absolutely. 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 It, 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 they're not mutually exclusive. I mean, you, it, that's the thing that people tend to confuse, you know, art and artists and, and, and colors and things like that. See, it, Yes, it contributes. Yes, on the appearance of it, but the the at the, the core of it is is getting to the, your market, owning your market, and making sure that you can deliver what you say you will within the perimeter and make some money. Now, if you do a thousand dollars door and it costs you nine hundred and fifty dollars, you got to get it out of business for sure. But if the, if you do that thousand dollars that and you, and at the end of it, it costs you. Six hundred dollars or seven hundred dollars, and you so you have a profit margin, and you can go to the next door and the next door. That is a business. So, so yes, there is the value, but it's also what is your taking home? And or did it, you does sell it the client? Is the client happy at the end? <clears throat> did you yeah. did you set expectations so that you could do the door for a cost of five hundred dollars and charge a thousand, and they would still like it? Did you show them a picture of my door? Sell them for a thousand? Because that's going to set up an issue. Even if you use all the craft that you have in the world to be able to do it for under a thousand, if you set expectations improperly, now no. we have a problem. But yeah, it's like if you added the value to the client so that they're happy at the price point that they can afford, that takes craft. That takes years of experience of trial and error to figure out how do Absolutely. I get the best possible thousand dollar gloss door. Absolutely. For that price. And, and, yeah. and, and sometimes, you know, say I have a budget so we can work backward. Yeah. If you have a particular budget and say, this is, 
within the perimeter you've given me, and I say that my daily rate is this, then then this is a three day job or whatever the, the you know the number is, and you work within that. I mean, it's it's a hard way to work in, and sometimes you know you know you're already getting into a financial burden that's going to skew a little bit and limits really your, your, your abilities. But, you know, when we do, you know, we've done things where it was a restaurant and it's like X amount of square foot. And we don't do that very often, as I said, because we're not known for that, but, you know, uh, I'll say, okay, well, that's the number. So that should be X amount per square foot. That means this is what I can do. And I feel confident doing it and I'll do it in four days and I'll make some good money and you'll have a good product. And that's the parameter. And it's not the best way to work, but, it's also a possibility if you if you choose to or just say you know I'm not interested. It's not I don't want to do that. Or we're on a job come. right now where I I priced what we would call standard painting. So for us, mm. we're still using premium products. We're still going to use a coat of oil primer first, but we're not going to go four rounds of filler. 